Hello guys, all right, before I get started on this video, I'm gonna tell you that I use this program to split when I'm using Live Split. I download Joy to Key. I have in the settings of Live Split, I have my start and split button as multiply on my keyboard. And then I find what button on my controller is the back button. So on, on Joy to Key, it's button seven. I set a profile, put it on button seven, and then I change the function to numpad, which is what the split is. So whenever I press back on my Xbox controller, it will split. So here's a test. Um, I come off this. There's my live split. I just press back on my controller, so it started. All right, guys, now I'm gonna start the video. Okay, to start, the first thing you wanna do when you're starting up this game, to speed run, you want to go on this settings menu. You want to have all that like you want this off, you want this off, and you want auto lock on on. So whenever a character dies, it goes on to another one. Uh, this one is just preference. I just have these are my settings. Uh, these what I will do for this. I put it down to two. It, it, obviously, it doesn't matter. I'm having it on zero right now, so you can hear me talk. But yeah, you can have this as whatever you want as well, adjusted. I have the brightness on free, doesn't really matter, but that's what I'm used to, how dark the game is for me. Uh, you want matchmaking off, you want restricted, restricted, play offline. You want this setting as play offline, because whenever you boot up the game, if you have it as play online, uh, you're going to keep getting asked to go online, which is really annoying. So when you've downpatched, you want to stay on play offline, and you want to go offline on Steam when you're playing this game. You you don't want to be online when you and on Steam because it will just try and update, uh, and you can't play online for speedruns anyway. So it's best to just stay offline all the time. Uh, and you get invaded if you're online on Steam. If you're online on Steam, uh, you get invaded by the NPCs, and you don't want to, you don't want that to happen because it it forces you to restart, uh, like kill the invader because it won't let you quit out. All right, you want the mouse sensitivity to zero because we're going to be using the mouse for different skips and setting up our camera in a certain way. So you want the mouse sensitivity as low as you can so you can like precisely put your camera somewhere. All right, so now go into key bindings. And what you want here, this is universal for me anyway, but you want W on run, you want run left A, and then you want dash and jump on left alt to dash, which is your run button, and you want jump on right alt. And this is mainly for Farron skip, which is a skip not far into the game. Uh, these don't matter if you're using a controller. Um, on this one, I use, I change the gesture menu. I make sure I like delete this one, basically. You press X to delete the key binding because I use my split button on back, like I said earlier. And if you use back, it will just open up your gesture menu. So you want to get rid of that and then turn it to like zero on numpad on your keyboard. So you can just, whenever you need to use the emote, there's one part where you need to use a gesture and that's when I use the button. I use the button twice, so it's not too important, but make sure you don't have the back button on gesture still if you use your back button to split. All right, so let's get started with the game now. Finally. Okay, I'm gonna turn it up now so you can hear the game. But I, you want to hear my voice mainly because you're going to be running through the game yourself. This is just a tip tutorial. All right, so you want to start an assassin. Doesn't matter what you name the character. You want to start an assassin. So, because this come starts with spook, and you start with a certain amount of dexterity that you need for Celso Twin Twinblades later. So it's the best starting class. Spook lets you do a certain skip. So you want to start with assassin. It's the fastest one, and you want to start with fire gem. Uh, this is because there's a certain uh, glitch we're going to use called Tumble Buff. And I use female. I always use female. It doesn't matter. You can just load whatever character. So let's start up. I'm going to keep Live Split running just so I know where, I'm, where I am in the game. Alright, so you want to spam start when you start up the game here. If you spam start, it will skip the cutscene as quick as possible when you're in the game. So you start off here. In Cemetery of Ash, what you want to do is run, and while you're running, this is a very important. You you want to use the claw grip. Now this is something that I've got a video on, and it's going to be in the description below. But you want to claw grip your controller. If you don't know what it is, Google it. 
work out what it is, but it's very important for Souls running. So it lets you basically run and open up your menu at the same time. It lets you easily control your character while controlling your menu as well. So this is something you want to learn and you want to get used to. It might hurt at first, but it's definitely one of the most important things you want to learn when you're running this game. So you want to, when you first come on here, you're going to want to turn off. There's uh, This is something really important. Your weight ratio in the top right corner, it says 45%, okay? There's two percentages that are really important in the speed run when you're running. All right, you want to have... So if I take off these two items of clothing, which is what you want to you want to do at the beginning of this game, you're going to go below 30% weight ratio. Now, if you go below 30%, it gives you a longer roll. So you're going to be rolling longer, further away, and you're going to get more iframes. Iframes is what you're protected by. Basically, you're invincible in them frames. So if you're rolling, it gives you longer iframes, gives you more iframes, and it gives you a longer roll if you're under 30%. So if you're running through certain areas and you're going to be rolling a lot, it's faster to be below 30% because you'll get more distance on your rolls. So that's just faster. And another important thing is 70%. That's the other weight ratio that's really important. I can't go above 70 right now, but what happens when you go above 70 is you get a fat roll. So your character starts rolling and he, he doesn't go any distance at all. And he, you get like zero iframes. So you want to always be below 70%. Literally all the time. You don't ever want to go above 70%. So keep an eye on that. Make sure you don't go above 70% when you're equipping stuff throughout the run. And you want to definitely always be below 30%, mainly when you're running between bosses or you need a longer roll, basically. So when you're running, you're going to spawn in here straight away because I've given you the basics of weight ratios and why we unequip things in the menu. So whenever you see me unequipping armor, it's usually always because I want to be below 30% to get a longer roll. Or I want stronger, I want more armor in a certain area because they, the enemies do a lot of damage. So it, it, it depends really, but you want to start off, as soon as you spawn in, you're going to want to run straight forward. So this is what you look like when you spawn in. Run straight forward, take off your armor. Them two items here, head and chest, you'll be below 30%. Now you want to run and pick up this Ashen Estus. The reason why you pick this up is because when you upgrade your Estus throughout the run, you need the Ashen Estus or the, character, the game doesn't let you upgrade. So it's just a, you don't pick it up because you don't really need the Ashen Estus throughout the run, but you need it to upgrade your Estus at any point. So you're going to want to run past here, go towards the first boss. You want to jump down, roll. See, now I've got a longer roll, so I, would, I save more time because my roll's longer. It's very important throughout the run when you're doing a lot of rolling. So as soon as you come into this boss, you're going to want to manage your stamina. This is something really important as well. Okay, I didn't explain it, but... I'll explain it now. When you're running, you're going to see my stamina bar, okay? You never want this to reach all the way down. You never want to run out of stamina completely. Because what happens is your character regens and you can't run again until it's full again. Now, if you leave it until it's right near the bottom, stop running for a second, and you can choose to run at any point straight away. So I can stop, run, stop, run. Whereas if I lay it drain all the way down, I'm just running somewhere, just say I'm running a long distance, I forget about managing my stamina, and my character takes a really long time to get his stamina to full, and I can't run at any point, so you don't have full control of your sprinting. Whereas if I do this, right at the bottom, I can just choose to sprint when it's halfway up. So it's just something you'll get used to, but you, you want to get used to managing your stamina, so keep an eye on it when you're running between places, you'll get used to it, you, you'll realise, oh, I've been running for a long time now, and take a look at it, you're not going to be constantly staring at it. When you first run the game, you'll be staring at it because you need to get used to it. But yeah. Alright, for this boss, there's a certain way of fighting him. You're going to want to hit him five times. Five normal R1s. And while you're doing this, you're going to be wanting to do this motion. One, two, three, four, five. You're going to be wanting to come around the side of him while you hit him. So you don't want to be locked on when you first pull this sword out. You want to be hitting him and moving around to the side at the same time. So then you're behind his back and then you can do two more R1s. So you've done seven hits, and then he'll do an attack, okay? Then you want to do three more hits. One, two, three. And then you want to probably dodge another attack, and then do one, three more attacks. All right, that's a total of 13 attacks, and he'll start to transform. At this point, you want to press Y and have your, hand, your sword two-handed. The reason for this is because you want to stagger him. So what you'll be doing is when he's transforming, you want to be hitting one R2, 
and then carry that on with a second R2 by holding RT again. So then when that's happened, you wait for the stamina to regen. You want to wait for him to come out of a transformation because he'll have... There's certain part periods where characters are invulnerable to being staggered. So they might be in the middle of a transformation or they might be turning turn into a second phase, you know. So you want to be... You want to be like careful of that. You want to realize when they're invulnerable to staggers. So I'll show you what it's like to fight this boss normally. So I pull this out. I'm gonna do five attacks. One, two, three, four, five. One, two. Wait for the attack. You need to roll this one. One, two, three. So I can strafe this. One, two. Now he's going to transform after this attack, but you can get an R2 in early and get extra damage sometimes if he doesn't transform. So now wait for him to come out of this, you can tell. R2, R2, and it's going to be 1R1. Okay. So now he's dead. Very easy boss. It it just takes getting used to learning the bosses. You're going to be making save files like I said in my previous video. If you haven't already, make sure you check out in the description of this video, there's a how to get started with Dark Souls 3 speedrunning. You want to be watching that video before you watch this video. Should have said it at the start of this video, but I forgot. Uh, what you want to do is watch that video and make sure you know that you want to make save files for every boss before you start running. You want to be knowing how to fight these bosses. And the only way you're going to learn that is by watching different speedrunners streams or by watching this tutorial and seeing certain things I explained but for that boss you want to, it's the exact same combo every time five hits two hits three hits three hits change to two hand r2 r2 wait for him to finish his transformation r2 r2 and then it's one r1 or two r1s at the end because it depends on if you get a charged r2 before he starts his transformation it's very technical stuff, but it's something you'll get used to and that you'll understand the more you play the game. Okay, now this is something I need to explain that's very important in the game, right? There's a thing we do called save and quit. Because this game is measured by in-game time, we you want to be saving as much in-game time as possible. So when I open this door, I'll just be opening it, right? I'll be in a really long animation for 10 seconds where I push this door open and after that, I've wasted 10, 10 seconds in-game time. Now what you want to do is you want to get used to quitting out on this game as quick as possible. So you press start, you press left on the D-pad, you press A, then you press LB or L1 depending on your controller, press A and then press left again and then press A. So you want to get used to this, it's something that you will get used to. It, it takes a long time, it probably takes like a, a few weeks before you actually get this perfect. Like you, you won't ever mess this up and you'll always get used to quitting. So what you need to do is you need to press start, left, A, LB, A, left, A, okay? Now, you want to be doing this as quick as possible because you just want to get out of the game as quick as possible. So I'll show you, this is what, this is what it starts to look like when you really get used to the, how to quit as fast as possible. See how fast this is and how consistent I am at it? This is just pure muscle memory of me playing the game and doing runs and speed runs and practicing the menuing with my hands. And that's literally all it is. So what you need to do is run up to a door, say, to cancel an animation, press A, and then quit out as quick as possible. And now, because I've just completed, uh, killed Gundir, and the, as you see now, the timer is not moving because this timer is set to read the in-game time. It's a very safe place for me to just press split. So there you go, I've pressed split. I've just killed that boss, and now my life split has me killing the boss in eight minutes, which is a world record for me, to be honest. So, <laughs> it's fucking terrible, but what you need, a, a good time around there is like 1.26 in game time, but yeah, I'm showing you guys how to do it. So you want to load back in as quick as possible, because you want to get back in the game, obviously. It doesn't take long, honestly, it's about the same as the door animation, to be honest. So you're straight in the game, and here you go, you, the door's open, it skips the animation, and you're in the game. You do this on a few things, like... Uh, levers, uh, mainly doors though. Or another way you can do it is it resets a mob. So look at this. You see this mob? He's coming. He's coming at me. You see, he spawned there though, didn't he? Now if I quit when he comes near me, he'll spawn exactly where he was. We do this in a few locations because you might want to pick up an item here. Just say there's an item, right? I've just picked up the item, and he's about to kill me. Ugh. I quit out. Okay. 
He did damage literally the second I quit out. Sometimes that cancels out the damage as well. So that's another thing that you can do. But this will reset the mob exactly where he was from when he spawned. He won't be next to me now. It won't save his positioning. He'll be back there, not spawned in. And you can use this to abuse certain places, but we don't actually do it a lot, to be honest. We do it um, we do it mainly on a door where you get absolutely gangbanged if you, do, <laughs> if you do not quit out. So that's just another thing that quit outs can do. So now you're going to want to run in here. And I roll right as I'm about to fall off the edge because it's quicker. Now, this is the handmaiden. You can buy anything from her. The quickest thing to do here is you can talk to her and move at the same time. So furthest you can go. It shows you how far you can go before the menu goes, right? I always say, bottom of these stairs, don't move, just to be safe. And you can, because you want to go to this blacksmith straight after buying, okay? Safest place is just at the bottom of these stairs, because if you go any further, you can go a little bit further, but you want to be safe with this. You don't want to cancel it, and then you have to run all the way back to her and get the menu again. So what you want to do is, this is another thing you want to be really quick at, is your menus, right? This is something you'll get used to. Takes a takes a lot of time, takes a lot of runs. It's just patience, and you'll get used to it. So come in here. What you need to do is buy the dagger and buy the short sword, and then you don't need to press B and come out. You can just walk forward, and it will it will close the menu for you. So you can just be sprinting straight away as soon as you leave the menu. Now this is something that's really important, right? Your your menu is not going to look like this while I'm when I'm when you first play this game. Okay, this is what it's going to first look like. Now you can't see where you're running, can you? Where you're, when you're uh, doing this. Because you can hold sprint and menu at the same time, right? You can't see anything right now. You want right to right, you want to click your right analog and it will take down this menu. Because you don't need this stuff. You don't care about the armor or how much it does. You, you, you're going to use it in a run, so it doesn't matter. So you want to have this like this so you can be sprinting. So you want to be holding B before you open this menu up. So you can be carrying on sprinting. You can't redo your sprint because it will just close you like this. So you want to be menuing mainly always when you're at full about full full endurance or you're doing a really long run. So if I start menuing, look at this endurance. If I start menuing as soon as it's about to be the end, right? I'm not going to have much time and I'm going to lose my sprint to menu. So I need to wait until I'm about full endurance and then here we go. I've got time to put the short, the sword on. I've got time to put my helmet on and then I can redo my sprint. So these are things you'll get used to, but just showing you guys what to do. So this is what it's like. You just bought the dagger, you just bought the short sword. Now you want to go to the blacksmith. Now you're going to infuse your weapon, your short sword, with a fire gem. And then you're going to allot your Estus, so you get four Estus. And you don't have to close this menu, you can just start holding sprint and walk away. Now you want to light this bonfire. And while this is being lit, you can do your menuing. So you can take the Ash and Estus off. And you can equip the short sword because you'll be using that from now on. Now you want to. This it takes a second before you can press A on this rest up bonfire. You just want to spam A and go straight to High Wall of Lothric. Now this is another quit out on this door. It's about to come up. So this is another door animation, and you don't want to watch it. So you straight away quit out. And then get straight back in the game. This is, this doesn't take long. It, it, people moan about quit outs, but it, it doesn't matter. So you want to stay at thirty below thirty percent still, so you're rolling. Because here, look, here are two rolls that I'm doing. Now I'm still staying below thirty. It doesn't really matter about your armor because you don't want to be hit anyway. You want to run up here, manage your stamina correctly. And now what you want to do is make sure your stamina's up. And you're going to run off here and you're going to roll in, like roll this direction, okay? And what you want is to pick up... Oh, there's a load of guys coming. What you want to do is pick up this gold pine resin, okay? But there's a certain animation skip you can do. If you're at full sprint and you're about to fall off and you pr you press A, you'll pick, up the you'll pick up the gold pine resin and you'll skip the animation of picking it up. Because normally you would just pick this up right now and your character stands still for a second... You know, how to pick, you know how it works when you pick up items. What you want to be doing is sprinting so that when you get off, you, you just do this. You basically pick it up and you skip the animation. That's it's, that's a little trick there. It saves like a, I don't know, like a second, but it's, it's just nice. So you're going to be running through here. Dodge left, dodge right. Now you want to go to the left side of this guy because you can get absolutely trolled. You want to roll for the first attack and then if they attack, just start rolling. 
you'll get used to it of getting through that area but sometimes you want to go to the left of this door and then to the right you want to walk here heal and drop all the way down roll pick up these items these furry knives that you'll need run past this guy again dodge him and as soon as you get towards this ladder quit out you don't need to quit out you can you can just go up the ladder it's very risky but just for safety quit out on the bottom of that ladder and you'll be safe you can load back in and go straight up the ladder because it respawns the mobs like i explained earlier now i'm just going to make a save just in case anything goes wrong i'll be making saves throughout this uh, tutorial just to in case i die i don't want to be running all the way back to show you guys what happened because there's this is dark souls you're going to die you're going to get used to dying in the speed run this is something you need to get used to now, as soon as you come up this ladder go straight across here now this is a glitch that we'll be using it's called spook quit out so you get your staff out and you want to cast spook okay right near this edge and you want to roll off okay you're going to die as soon as you land down here you're going to die but this is a trick open up your menu and quit out as soon as you land okay as soon as you land press quit you can kind of see your character moving closer and closer to the floor and as soon as he reaches to the floor quit out now you can do it by the scream because your character screams okay but that's a lit sometimes you can be a little bit too late on that if you're just going by a reaction um but you want to that's a, a, a glitch basically it sends you down here keeps you alive and you need to cast spook or you'll die as soon as you land on the ground you need to cast spook as soon as you land quit out and you'll you'll land in the place where you've quit out all right now this is the way to go this guy spawns here so you want to go to the right of him right as soon as you get here right if he attacks roll and then strafe to the right of this guy you never have to roll for that second guy you can always just strafe to the right side of him now as soon as you get to this old lady you want to get to her spam a heal because you've got time you have to wait for the start menu to come up and then just quit out now you're thinking oh why did he just quit out you're you're just going to come back in the exact same place no what happens is you're inside dancers arena right now where the boss is now if you quit out it thinks you're still in the boss arena it, it thinks you're in the boss arena and it wants to put you put you outside of it so basically you teleport back and you save time. You, d you don't need to run all the way back to the door you just came in from. So you end up here and you can just run back towards vault. Now stay to the right side so that guy doesn't hit you. If this guy hit attacks, roll. Get your stamina back up. Run straight to the vault towards vault. And there you go. Now you're going straight to the second boss. So I've explained certain things like your endurance. I've, in sp I've explained spook quitting out. So you want to cast spook, quit out as soon as you land. And you'll land in the place where you died or fit the game thinks you died um now this is another glitch that's important to know throughout the run because you'll be using it a few times now you want to have gold pine resin on and you want to have throwing knives on okay you have these in these different inventories so what you can do here is you can just click in the inventory come out go back in again and put something in the third one but that's slow right what you want to do is you want to be menuing fast sometimes you want to get used to putting going in the second slot putting on gold pine resin and then clicking RB and it takes you to the next slot and then you can put throwing knives on. So as soon as you come out, you have second and third equipped. Now, <clears throat> this is really important. I'm going to show you different ways of doing this tumble buff. I'll just make a save file so I can load back in and have my items back. But I'll show you guys what this glitch is and why it's important throughout the run. This saves you going back and leveling in the early game, basically, because you have a lot of damage. Now, what you want to do is, right, you cannot put gold pine resin on a fire short sword because it's got a fire gem on it. The game wasn't, won't let you, okay? But if you use a gold pine resin, go to use it, your character will scratch their asshole. All right, do that. It's just only once you need to do it, but I'm showing you what the animation is. And now, if because you've got the gold pine resin equipped, it's going to use it, right? So you want to use spook and spam X on throwing knives. Boom. GPR is on your weapon, and you've used one, okay? Now, sometimes you might not want to use a gold pine resin, but you want it on your weapon. Now, I'll show you what you do on vault. This is what you do on vault because you want you want both the gold pine resin. I'll show you what's so important about um, your gold pine resin. You want it, what you want to do on this skip. You basically want to dupe the weapon. Okay, so what you'll do is you'll use the gold pine resin. 
and you want to be doing this while you're sprinting, okay? So while you're sprinting, when your stamina is about to go low, use a gold pan resin and it will go back up. Now what you want to do is you want to drop this out of your inventory, okay? Look, there it is. I've queued it up. I take it out of the inventory and you want to be doing this while you're running, okay? Because then you're not losing any time at all. And you want to drop your gold pan resin somewhere that you can pick up later. So as, as you're running, just say I'm running through here. I want to drop these items here. And I'm running to the boss. And the item's there on the floor. It's not in my inventory. But as soon as I cast spook and use a throwing knife, it's going to put gold pine resin on my weapon. So then I've got the gold pine resin on my weapon, but I've also not used it. So what I'll do here is I'll go into this boss, cast spook, use my throwing knife and pick up the gold pine resin. So I step, uh, regen my stamina while the boss comes towards me. Okay. Now fighting vault. This is really important. There's f two ways you can fight vault. There's a fast way and there's a, p a f safer way, but I I'd say it's a safer way, but it's slower. Okay. You can f stagger him out of his animation and then kill him, or you can let him go through his animation and then kill him after. There's a slight difference in time, but one's safer and one's not. I'll show you the two different fights now, okay? So what you come in, come in this fight, cast spook, use your throwing knife, okay? You're going to want to do seven hits on this guy, seven hits, and then wait for him to do an attack, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay? Now you want to wait him to do attack, and eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and you want to hit fifteen. 13, 14, 15, okay, you've staggered him, and then you want to finish him off as quick as you can. There you go, he's dead. Now that's a bit risky. That's a bit of a risky fight, because what can happen is, if you stagger him, he can just do, he goes into phase 2 instantly, and he can just do a really bad attack that one-shots you, or, it's a bit scary, okay? So now I'm going to show you the different fight. The reason why... You, I do 15 hits there is you want to do mainly you want to do seven and then you want, want him to do an attack and then get 14 hits in okay and the 15th hit will stagger him you need to wait for him to come out of the screaming animation and for him to reset basically you can see his character sort of jolt in that time you want to be in front of him and you want to hit him so he staggers you get used to it it's just the more you practice going over boss stats like strats is kind of hard because there's it's so hard to explain because there's so many different things that they can do. But you'll get used to it the more and more you practice the bosses, okay? So you want to practice the bosses yourself and you want to learn how to fight the boss yourself. But you also want to watch streams and see how people fight bosses. It's so important. It's mainly watching the top players and see how they react to certain movesets. And you go, oh, I, I react this way, but it's, it's faster to react this way. So it's just a lot of research, to be honest. But you, you'll get used to it. So I'll show you the different fight, okay? The different fight, you let him basically run three times. So I leave these here. Cast spook. I can go. I can grab these later if I put them a little bit behind me. So I don't need to grab them right now. So I'll, I'll fight him. He'll jump back sometimes, and you want to always be on his belly. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14 okay now he's gonna once twice and then on this third one it's the last roll so you want to roll towards him and then you want to wall on him just completely wall on him here and he'll die now that's a safe way of doing this fight i think it's so easy it's a little bit slower but it but it's easy okay now this door is taking ages to open up all right what you want to do after this fight is quit out as soon as you see as soon as you hear it comes up that the boss has been killed. It says, boss has been killed. You want to quit out on this door. You don't want to do it earlier or you'll spawn backwards. You'll spawn at the beginning of the fight. You want to quit out as soon as it says, boss has been defeated on in front of this door. Now, as soon as you load back in, what will happen is, there you go, doors are open. You can go straight through and you can raise this banner. You want to skip the cutscene as quick as possible. Spam start, so you skip it. Because that counts as in-game time. And you want to cast Spook here, okay? Spook cancels out any full damage. You want to roll towards these skulls and pick them up. You want to stand on this like this part of the dog, okay? If you if you come in a little bit far left, the dogs will aggro. If you come basically where this guy's hip is, pretty much here, you can just pick up the skulls without them aggroing. So you can literally just like have, you know, you can go anywhere in the dog right here. Basically bum him and he doesn't realise that you're here. This looks very good. 
Look at this. This might be a thumbnail for me, to be honest. This might be a thumbnail. But, um, yeah, anyway, you're going to run past these dogs. Run towards these, this gate. So now you've got two alluring skulls which attract enemies. You're going to run through this gate. Straight through everyone. You'll get used to it the more you run through this game. And you want to be ready when you're quit out here. As soon as you come close to this door, quit out. Now the reason we do this, again, is what I explained earlier. You want to reset the mob's animate, uh, like spawn positioning. Because he's blocking the door right now. And he'd just block it. So if you just quit out, he'll be out of the door. And you can just run straight through. Sometimes he'll sprint out and try and block you again. But just roll into him and punch him. Okay, roll across here. Pick up these bundles. Run out here. Drop down. Roll. You want to be spamming roll or that happens. If you don't spam roll, you'll do that. And it's worse than a lot of time. Pick up this Esther shard. Run to the left here. Open up this door. Pick up the charcoal pine resin. Now you can walk over this table here. If you walk up... Oh, well, I just broke it. But if you walk up that chair, you can run over the table and run over the railing. Otherwise, you can just run to the left here. Drop down and roll. You want to sprint... Keep sprinting. You can roll into this guy to stop him attacking. You can just roll, run to the right of him, but rolling into him safe. So you can do that. You're going to run here. Don't stop running or you're going to get hit. Stop your sprint here. Get stamina. Run through here. Drop down. And now you want to two-hand your weapon, okay? Press Y. Wait for this lizard to run a little bit. Get some stamina. Hold RT. One-shot it, okay? You want to charge your R2 there. And then you'll get the sharp gem. Okay? Now you want to run towards Greatwood right now. Now this is a trick we do on this door. All right? Normally a guy blocks the door here. And you can't quit because he always stands in the door. So you want to run past these two guys. They might attack so you roll. And then just heal here. If you heal he'll walk out the way like this. Or he'll run towards you. And you can just run through. You mainly want to roll there as soon as you get through that door. I didn't roll. It's good so I got here. But you want to roll when you get through that door. Now you're running towards Greatwood. Okay? Now we're going to be using the exact same glitch we used on Vault. You want to equip the charcoal pine resin into this slot here, instead of the gold pine resin. And you want to go towards this boss. Now I'm going to quit out, because this boss is pretty technical on certain things. I'm going to show you a glitch. There's a skip in this fight, and there's also... <laughs> yeah, there's a skip in this fight, but there's also a way to fight the boss in this as well. You need to fight the boss a certain way. This, this boss is fought the same way every time, okay? This is a boss I can tell you how to fight. I can't tell you all the different movesets of certain bosses, okay? There's going to be, like, Dancer later on. You're going to fight Dancer, and Dancer will do all these different movesets, and you're going to go, oh, how do I fight this, Nems? I can't tell you how to fight all these different movesets, because while I'm making this tutorial, it's going to be 10 hours long if I tell you every single moveset. You're going to want to... This boss is always the same, all right? So you want to have Spook uh, your staff out again. You want to run in. Put the charcoal pine resin, unequip it, drop it, cast spook again, use your throwing knife as soon as possible where it won't work. So now you've got charcoal pine resin on your sword and you can also pick it back up. So you've got two again. Now you want to run here, get your stamina back up and then hit this guy four times in the belly, okay? So one, two, three, four. Wait for this arm to come. One, two. All right, I've missed a few attacks here, but it doesn't matter. You just want to get two hits in here. Okay, I died. Look, this is what can happen if you get trolled a little bit or you miss a hit. So I'm just going to show you basically what little things can happen. Like, I might as well keep this in the... Like, I could edit this out of the tutorial, but I'm going to keep it in, okay? Like, I'm going to be keeping this in a, a few things in this tutorial just so you can see what can happen or what can go wrong. It, it's just certain... Loads of little things, right? You can die on Great Wood. You can die on... You can die on every boss if you play it wrong, okay? So you want to blame yourself. M my fault there was... Okay, I'm, I've played this game a lot, so I know exactly what I've done wrong there. What I've done wrong is I've missed the attack on the thing, and the guy can just hit me, okay? So, this is... I'll show you a way to fight this boss, basically, without getting trolled. You can do this. Use a throwing knife. Pick this up. Now, you, when you do these four hits, you don't want to stand next to the hand like I just did. You don't want to, like, wait for the mob to hit you. You want to roll, to be honest. You've got a lot of time. You can just take your time. So, you want to make sure you've got enough stamina here to do one, two, three, four... Move away. One, two. Okay, mob didn't get me. If he did, I would have rolled. And then I would have hit the two. Walk over here. Pop your soul. 
And then as soon as he starts dragging his ass forward, run towards the middle and hit this leg. So you might miss the attack, but you can hit it as soon as it comes here. There you go. I've hit it. If you miss the attack, you can hit it again. Run to this leg. One, two. Run to the belly. One, two, three, four. Now I'll show you this glitch, but I'll, sh I'll show you what happens, right? Okay, that's a glitch I just performed, right? You don't have a clue what I just did, but you saw what I just did, right? I'll explain it now. When you load back in, I'm going to be above the boss fight. Exactly above the boss. So look here. I just killed the boss. Boss is dead. I've got his soul to prove it. There's his soul. I killed him. There's my soul. And now, look, I'm up here again. And I can just go through that door and run straight to where I need to go. So I save time, okay? Now, I'll show you what I do on this glitch. I'll get down there and show you. All right, on this glitch, okay, it's it's really it's just a lot of practice. A lot of these skips are a lot a lot of practice because you're not going to get them first time. You're not going to get them second time. You're going to have to keep redoing them, okay? Now this is the part where we run up here, okay? I can't get up right now because I'm getting trolled. <laughs> but what happens is you'll kill the boss. As soon as you kill the boss, he'll die. He'll go through his death animation, and you want to run towards this area here, and you want to run up here, okay? Now, as soon as you're up here, just carry on sprinting, okay? You want to make sure you've got enough stamina, and you want to open up your menu, okay? As soon as you hear, there's a certain sound you hear when a boss dies, okay? You hear like a boom, okay? That's that's all the way I can explain it, is it's like a boom. You hear it whenever you kill bosses, and this is something you need to listen out for for all the bosses, basically, because as soon as you kill a boss and you hear that boom sound, it means you can usually homeward bone out because you've got their, their soul. It doesn't work on all bosses, because you can you can bone quicker on some bosses and still get their soul, but it works for this skip, okay? As soon as you hear that boom, start counting down to three. Counting up to three, okay? This is how I do it, right? As soon as I hear the boom, this is this there's different ways you can get this timing down, alright? But this is my way of doing it, and I'll show you how I do it. Run against this wall. As soon as you hear the boom, right, you're going to have this menu open like this. You're going to have the quit menu already open, okay? And you're going to be running against this wall while it's open. Now, as soon as you hear the boom, start counting to three. So this is how I count. I go one, two, three, okay? That's how I count. That speed. I know it sounds stupid, but you're going to get used to this sort of thing. You have to get used to timing. Now, you can't look at your live split because it's not the exact same time as I count to three, okay? It's just, just saying you'll get used to, I nod my head forward. Sounds weird, but I nod my head forward whenever I'm counting to three. As soon as my third, my head starts nodding forward on the third one, I do the jump and I quit out. Now, what happens is on the count of three, what you're doing is you're jumping and you're waiting like a mini second and then you're quitting. That's exactly what I'm doing. So I'm jumping, so I'm running, running, running. Hear the boom, okay? I'm hearing the boom right now. Boom. One. As soon as I hear the boom, start on one. Go one. Okay? So boom. One. Two. And jump. And then quit. So that's what I do. I jump and quit on three, okay? One, two, jump, quit. That's exactly. That's literally how I do this skip. And it's something you'll have to get used to yourself again. But that's my tip for how to do this skip. Basically, you do the skip that I just showed you. But you want to pick up the homeward bone, literally right next to the skip before you do it. So do the same thing, chuckle bone resin down. Use the knives. Make sure you've got enough stamina for the four hits here. Heal up if you get hit instead of popping the soul. If you twist like that, you just run. Run over here, make sure you pick up this homeward bone. One, two, three.
There you go, you're through here. Crow out on this door. And you're on a run, start towards running towards the best skip in the game. Just gonna make a save file here because I could die. Because you're about to go past a uh, cancer bridge. So for here, you want to regen your stamina, give yourself these guys a little bit of time to get across the bridge. Go a bit wide here, roll the attacks, come through here, roll this first pot, go towards the right so that guy doesn't hit you, roll the second pot. You can quit out here to stop the dogs aggroing on you. Don't need to though. Just run to this door, quit out. Now there are other ways that you can do you can get towards this skip. You don't have to do Great Wood skip, but I'm gonna be showing you the most optimal route on this game. I'm not gonna show you peach routes. I'm not gonna show you, oh, you can go this way instead. That's five minutes slower. Uh, otherwise, there's no point in me making a tutorial. I'm trying to make you a tutorial showing you the perspective of someone who's got the top time at the moment. It's, I'm gonna improve it a lot more, but I'm showing you why it's fast because I'm doing I'm doing the most optimal route and I'm showing you I think anyway when you're learning a game you, you're gonna want to learn the most hard, you're gonna want to learn the hardest stuff anyway just dive in head first and learn the game as quick as possible because that's how that's how you learn man you, you're not gonna this game's got save files so you can just practice bosses again and again anyway it's not like you need to run through the game to practice the boss like just keep just learn the hardest thing if I'm being honest with you learn the hardest thing get used to it you want to Run to the right of that guy, like I just did. So you strafe him, and then quit out on this door. So as soon as you come out here, make sure you got the charcoal pine resin in the second slot, because you unequipped it earlier. And then put the alluring skulls in the fourth slot, like this. And then put the homeward bone in the fifth slot, like this. So you want this inventory, and it'll be this inventory for a while now. Okay, now we're coming up to one of the hardest skips. So what you want to do is come off here. I'm going to quit out. So I don't have to restart if I die. So you're not going to want to quit like I just did now. I'm just doing it for tutorial purposes. What you're going to want to do here is roll off this edge. Roll backwards. And then throw a skull so the dogs fall off the edge. So roll here. Roll back. Throw a skull. And the dogs will roll off the edge. Like this. See sometimes you get trolled like that. Okay, Just kill the dog. Sometimes you can get trailed like that. Kill the dog. That's it. That, that's really unlucky. So what... So I'll show you the inputs of what you want to do for the skip. What you want to do is you want to have the key bindings like I showed you earlier. W for on forward. Left A. Dash left alt. And jump right alt. So what you want to do for the skip... This is the input. You want to run forward and hold run. So W and left alt. And then you want to practice this input away from the skip. Practice it as many times as you can until you get it down. So what you want to do is run W, left alt. And then as soon as you're about to do the jump, let go of W. And then press A and right alt at the same time. Exactly as you come off W. So come off your W, A and right alt. And you're going, to get, you're going to get this little mini jump. I'm just freezing because my game's la lagging. So you want to do that and jump left. Keep doing it and get the input down and down and down before you start the skip. Now, this is where you want to place your foot. When you throw the skull, you're going to throw it here, right? Move downwards and you're going to come to this rock that I'm going to put my left foot on now. That's your landmark. You want to use that as the landmark of where you want to put your foot. See now, there's a black line that comes from the wall just to the right of the rock that I put my foot on. You want to put your left foot in line with that black line. And you see where my foot is now? It's just to the right of a white rock that's in between where my nuts are. Well, I'm a female, so not my nuts, but you know what I mean. In between my legs, there's a white rock, and you want your foot left of it just like my foot is now. You'll get zoom in full screen just look exactly where this is to where you're relevant to your screen and work out this is exactly where you want your foot it's not too precise but that's where you want your foot and this is where you start to use your mouse now 
when you put your foot in this spot, like this, you're going to want to use, say so there's your foot, foot's in the right spot, you're going to want to use a rock. Now, there's a certain line up here that has a certain rock that you use to line up where your camera is. Now, this rock is completely blocked right now, right? Because the dog died exactly where it was. So you can't even see it. It's a massive troll when that happens. <laughs> You're going to want to be lucky enough not to get the dog's blood all over it. So I think if I quit here, it will give me the blood. Yeah, the blood will be gone. No, the blood's still there. So I can't see it completely. I'll load in and just do the same thing really quickly. But yeah, that's the foot line up. And that's exactly how you want to get the dogs. If the blood splots, splashes on the rock, it's going to be really hard to see. But that's pretty unlucky. I'm going to spook here just because my health's lower than it should be. But you're going to fall off here. Roll backwards. Throw the skull. Let the dogs fall off. Get in the positioning. Put your foot in the spot. Now look, you can see the rock clearly now. My foot's in the position. And this, now this is where you want to use your mouse. Because your mouse is on zero sensitivity, you can put your mouse pretty much wherever you want. So put your mouse, there's this rock here that I use. See now my health bar is just on the left of the rock. The end of my health bar is just on the left of it. And that's just on the right of it. If you zoom in, you'll be able to see it. You want it halfway across this rock. You don't want it on the left like that. You don't want it on the right. You want it dead in the middle. As soon as you've finished your mouse positioning, if you take your hand off the mouse, you'll jolt like this. See, there's a trick to this. You put your hand in the right positioning with the mouse. Press start on your controller. Take your hand off the mouse and then press start again. That way you won't move the mouse. Now you want to do the same inputs that I was showing you a minute ago. So you want to run and then jump at the right time. Now this is going to take you hours and hours of practice. Don't be disheartened. You're going to have to keep going and going until you get the timing down and get the input down. This is the hardest skip I think to, to learn. And then when you've got it, you'll be fine with all the other skips. It's just a matter of practice. So I'll show you what happens with this skip. Okay, you run and you jump. Now, if you jump correctly, you're going to jump like this, and you're going to land exactly like this. If you do it too early, you're going to jump up and live. If you do it too late, you're just going to fall down and die. Again, practice, 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 because if you die, you're going to lose your run. If you, In a run, if you're, if you're being a bit... You want to finish runs, you want to get runs going, grab the bonfire just before where I just dropped down, and keep coming here again and again. Keep trying to do it. And you have to get an M bar as well, because then you have the right HP positioning. So, if you've played Resident Evil before, you're going to understand what's happening right now to my character. I'm in tank controls right now. So you hold forward, and your character will move forward. If you tilt your analog right, your character will turn right. If you tilt your analog left, your character will turn left. If you hold down on your analog, your character is just going to go crazy like this. If you hold right on your analog, he's going to go crazy like this. If you hold left, he's going to go crazy like this. So you want to control your character like you're a tank, basically. Imagine you're a tank and you can only walk forward. And you can only turn by t tilting like this. So now what you want to do as soon as you come up this skip is run up here. Stay to the left wall against it. Keep running against this wall. Run past this enemy. Jump down this side. And then walk down here. As soon as you walk down here, the camera's going to flip. Because you're going below it. So there you go, now you're above the, yourself. Keep running straight here, and you're gonna come through this gap. Keep running, this takes practice. Again, it's just gonna take a few bit of practice, not just watching the video. Come here, roll, come off here, roll. Now what you wanna do is when you get here, go to the last two rocks. These two rocks are the furthest out rocks. This one here, that I'm on, and this one here that I'm standing on. Stand, run in this direction. And run in between these last two rocks and run in a straight line. Keep running, keep running, keep running. And you're going to start seeing trees, okay? When you see these trees, this is where I start using my other landmark. My other landmark is, okay, you see these leaves, okay? There's one leaf that is different to the, all of them. And it's this one that I'm about to stand on now. This leaf here. This has like, it's like holding up three fingers, okay? But it looks like an eagle. Or it looks, it's got a different shape. You'll be able to tell really easily when you run this game. Three, it's like it's holding three fingers and you're going to want to run towards that from when you come from the rocks. So you're running from the rocks, I'll show you now. 
These are the two rocks. Run in a straight line in between them both. Keep running, keep running, keep running. And then you're going to want to run towards the three-fingered eagle sort of leaf. As soon as you get past it, come up here. And you see this leaf that I'm standing on now? It's just on, just on the left of me. I can't get to it because there's like a wall. As soon as you get past this clump, quit out. And you'll be like, uh, you've, you've completed Farron Skip. That's how you do Farron Skip, okay? Just a lot of practice. Do exactly what I just did. Use them landmarks. Use the inputs. And this is where you'll be up to. Okay, now I'll show you what to do after Farron Skip. Alright, I had to go make some dinner, so I'm going to carry this rest of this tutorial on from what was earlier. Just finished off at Fair and Skip. <clears throat> on the other side of the wall now. Open this up and run towards the Twin Blades. Pick these up. Pick up this coal. You can quit out to Diego this guy, but you usually have time. Pick up the coal because you need that later for the sharp gem. Now you want to run straight towards Watchers. Nothing tricky here, just running all the way there. Make sure you've got the same layout as my menu right here because this is what we'll be using until like after Lake Shot, uh, after the Warner fight. Oh, my game's lagging. Brilliant. Quit out at this bonfire. <clears throat> as soon as you get to this bonfire, quit out. So the guy Diagro is from you. Light this bonfire and then rest it up. So you get your Estus back and your FP back. So you can use Spook again. Okay, now run towards Watchers. But this, fir this first guy will not hit you. Second guy might hit you. You have to roll most of the time. Yeah, might have to roll twice depending on an attack. So this first guy will never hit you. Second guy, he's going to have to roll that. Run to the right side of these guys. And these two guys pretty lunge for you. So just roll twice, three times depending on what attacks they do. And then quit out on this door. Now when you get to this door, you're going to want to do a skip called the Watcher's Skip. Now... If you've, play, you've played this game before, if you're watching this tutorial, Watchers are a boss that are pretty annoying, and at this level right now I'd get my shit pushed in, but <clears throat> there's a certain skip here where you can make their characters do nothing. So what you want to do is run into this corner, don't run, whatever, walk into it, stop, stop, and then use your mouse again to position your camera. Now, if you look at my health bar, there's a candle just on the right of my health bar. And there's another candle just on the right to my health bar again, okay? You want your health bar to be in between th this candle, um, that's just about to be covered by my health bar, and this candle that's just been covered by my health bar as well. Anything that's just on the left of this last candle will be perfect. That'll work, that'll work, that'll work, that'll work. You just want to see that right candle just on the right of your health bar. Now press start so your mouse doesn't move again. And then press start again. Now walk into this corner, let go, and tap W. So your character turns. Okay? My character just turned, okay? This is what people make a lot of mistakes on and it fails this skip. Some people do this. Okay, you see my character moved. You do not want your character to move. You want him to turn. See this? Turning. Slightly turning. He took that's me moving. That's bad. That won't work. So walk back into the corner, do it again. So if you fail it, it's not like you're failing, you don't it doesn't take much time to redo. But if your character moves too much, it won't work. What you need to do is just that'll move too much. That moves too much. You need to make it so your character turns, just like that. Perfect. You'll get used to it, you just need to tap it as light as you can. The W button. And it'll work. So yeah, I'll show you how to do it. Tap, so you turn. Hold RT, wait for your character to reset his positioning. Characters reset, you can't do you can't press R2 straight after, and then just tap R2 and then quit out. Now you'll be in this boss fight. 
And we're going to do the exact same trick that you've seen on all the other bosses so far. We've put our resin on, dropped it, and then cast Spook, put a dagger on, cast it again. Now the reason we do do this is, so now right, right now this is what the glitch has done, he's made the character freeze, see this? It's got two phases, you'll kill it in the first phase, then the second phase will spawn, and the second phase will be frozen the exact same as this. So you're going to skip this boss basically, but you still kill it. So, what, what we'll do, charcoal prime resin, sprint over, unequip it, drop it, cast spook, throw your knife, pick it up, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So you want to do that exactly what I just did. Wait for the second phase to spawn. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six hits is just enough endurance past your F FP maximum. So you'll do six hits if your endurance is just past. Okay, now I'm going to show you a very simple dupe. It's very important here. While this grave is moving, so you've got time, you want to... Go onto your inventory, go to the Watcher's Soul, say use, but then click no. So you're, you've said no to using the soul. Now go into your inventory, go to the soul, and now leave it so it's on the floor. Similar to the tumble buff, but with a soul, what you do here is you spook, you use the knife straight away. So there you go, I've just got 20,000 souls that I didn't use and I can pick the cell back up. So this way I use, I get the Watcher's Soul, the Watcher's Souls without using the Watcher's uh, actual soul. And there's another way of doing this, but of using the soul. The other way of doing this is using the soul, using Spook, and then throwing the knife and then you'll get the soul again. But with this way you don't want to do that because what you want to do is you want to have the soul still so you get double the amount without using the soul. So I'll show you now, all quick together, because you need to keep the resin from the fire on your sword quick enough for the next section. So I'll show this again. Go to the skip, put your mouse in the right position, uh, your camera in the right position, walk against the wall, tap W, make sure, oh, I mucked up, so tap W again. Hold RT, wait for your character to reset, tap RT, and then perfect, skip will work every time. Now load back in. And here you go, you're in the boss fight. Start running towards the boss. Use the resin, unequip it. Drop it. Spook. Use a throwing knife again. Pick it up. One, two, three, four, Five, six. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Then one, two, three, four, five, six. Six again, and then two hits. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two. Then go over to here, get ready to, as soon as you see it's been killed, say use the soul, no, like I just said earlier, drop it, use spook, use your throwing knife, and then pick it up, and there you go, got the soul. So we're going to go through here, we're going to drop off the edge, drop here, and then hit this skeleton three times, one, two, Run over here, run in this L cut, like enclave, and then pick up the bone shard. Now, <laughs> if you run out of the fire resin with the skeleton that you just killed, what you need to do is hit him later so he runs into the ball and kills himself. That's the alternative method. Okay, 
Now I'm going to quit out here because I'm going to show you another skip. Come minor skip. For this skip, you're going to want to jump from the right side and jump towards the center. So you're jumping from the right and you're jumping towards the center of this and you're getting up, picking up this bleed. This guy's going to shoot you with a bow. So run to the left. As soon as you hear it shoot, jump right. And you don't want to go down here. You want to go up here. You want to pick up this. He's going to throw this at you. And you're going to want to roll. These guys can murder you. You can get really unlucky. But it's just a matter of practice. Again. So make save files all over the place. So you want to quit out just before this, this uh, pickup that I just went to. These are ashes that you need to upgrade your weapon. So what you do is you quit out so the aggro resets, pick up the ashes, go down these stairs, get out your shield, roll, and then block these knives, and run past. Sometimes he doesn't throw the knives, but most of the time he does, so you can just block them and then run past. Alright, so what you need to do again is re-equip your pine resin. Run up here. Run towards wall near. And get ready again to do the exact same glitch. But this time, we're not going to drop the resin. So the the uh, tumble buff onto the weapon is going to be a lot easier from here on out. Because we don't need to dupe anymore. So what I'll do is I'll make a save file here. And I guess I guess Nems, Nems is just the god gamer. So he can just do it for 80% of the time. Never mind that noise. That's just uh, my gold split sound for my splits. <laughs> I forgot to split for watchers and it's mucked up a little bit. Alright, so you come in here. Now this fight is pretty easy. Like it says in my uh, live split uh, brackets, it says 2, 8 and 5. So what you want to do here is you want to hit the first bracelet 2 times, the second bracelet 8 times, and the third bracelet 5 times. And now the third bracelet is important. You need to break the third bracelet before he bring brings it forward, or you'll get a slow death. You save 10 seconds getting the fast kill. So what you'll do here is you come into this fight, Go to use the charcoal pine resin, but this time you don't need to drop it. Cast spook. Use your throwing knife. Hold, press Y so you're two-handing. Hold RT and then tap RT. So that's the first bracelet. Run forward. One, two, three. All right, three hits. Anything on the arm and the bracelet count. Four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, that's that done. That's the first bracelet, okay? I can't find the second one. One, two. All right. I can't get it in time. So I was showing you guys what happens if you kill the second bracelet too far away from the third bracelet. Now let me show you how to properly fight this boss. You need to make sure when you destroy the second bracelet that you're close enough to the third bracelet and you have enough stamina to get to the third bracelet in time. <clears throat> now let me show you. Come in this fight, destroy the first bracelet the exact same every time. Second bracelet, get eight hits but make sure that you're close enough to the third bracelet and that you have full stamina on your final hit. So I'll show you. Use this. Use your charcoal pyro resin. Use your knife. Hold RT. One, and then tap. Two. Run forward. He, might does, he does different attacks on this second one, but one, two, three. Okay, bring it up. So wait for it to come down. Four, five, six, seven. Now wait for your stamina to go to full and then hit it eighth. Run towards the last one. Hit it four times. One, two, three, four. Follow it. And then hit it twice here. One, two. Use. Now use your soul here. Use the Watcher's soul. And then light the bonfire. Okay? Now you wanted to light. The, the reason why you use that soul just there is so you can dupe it here. You can use it now. You could have used the soul now. But if you're quick enough, you can use it just at the end of that fight. Make sure you light that bonfire because you'll be going to it later. Now this is where we go towards the lake. We run here and we cast spook. And when we cast spook here, we can use we can dupe the soul that we used in the fight just now. So use this and then spam your knives. And you just got 20,000 souls for nothing. Now we're going to run towards the lake. Now this is important. Run between the legs of this demon. Drop down. And then grab these large titanite shard. Run towards the lake. Alright guys, I had, to, I had to edit this part in because I quit out for at this part to show something for tutorial. But you definitely do not want to quit on this part because it messes with the ballistic the blister that shoots at you here. 
What you want to do is you start regening your stamina as soon as you get in here. So just regen your stam. Start running to this. And what will happen? This guy will shoot you just before you get to this. So you want to roll just before you get to it. Roll straight after. And then roll again. The cycle was kind of screwed up there because of a... Uh, for some reason the save files got it a bit screwed. But I waited around to show you. So you want to regen stamina again. That one I miss you. Roll this one. And then roll the final one. Pick this up. Pick up this. You want to go to this corner. And you want to run past this so you don't get killed by anyone. And that's the lake shards done. So you want to pick up them shards and you want to pick up the shield. Because you use that shield later on. I'll show you why. So you pick up all these shards. Go to this bonfire. Pick it up. So just make a save file. And start practicing how to get through them, them uh, through the lake like that. It's just timing the the uh, noise of the ballistic shooting at you. Now bone to fire link. Okay. You need to just t time exactly when the ballistics are coming. At, ballistas are coming at you, and just get used to the cycle for it. Okay, so now you're at fire link. You've got all your materials. You've got your your weapons. So you've got everything you need right now. So what you'll do here. I've got it in my splits, but you need to get used to what you need to buy. There's going to be uh, notes that I'll have in the description. But what you need to do here is you'll come in here straight away. You want to give the ashes. You want to sell your souls, all the souls that you have. Go to purchase, buy 12 of these, 12 Titanite Shards, 12 Homeward Bones, and then leave. Come over here. Okay, now this is something you need to do earlier in the run. This is an S stock, okay? You want to drop this S stock at any point in, before you get here. So drop it before Vol, drop it before anyone. Just make sure you drop that S stock. So then when you come in here, you go straight to reinforce, and then you just press left once, and you go straight to twin twin blades. If you had S stock, then it would go. When you press left, it would go straight to S stock. So you need to make sure you drop them. Upgrade to level 5, go down to give coal, go to infuse, twin blades, sharp gem, then you want to enforce your Estus once. Okay, that's everything here. Go to the, uh, and, oh, what's her name? Firekeeper. Get 12 vigor and 39 dexterity. You'll have the exact, last perfect amount of souls to get 12 and 39. So 12 Vigor, 39 Dexterity for the Twin Blades. Now, come on here. Burn the Undead Bone Shard so you get more healing from your Estus. And then straight to Farron Keep Perimeter. And split. Now, we're on our way to Sage now. Uh, this boss is consistent, funny enough. There's two f ways the fight can go. You can get instant soul mass, or you can get uh, an attack that you need to parry. It's really easy parry. You just get used to it, the timing of it. So here, this is what I do. I put the shield on the second slot, so the staff is now gone. And you want to run to the left of this guy. You can run, or you can have to roll there. Most of the time, she follows you here, so you'll quit here. But she's not following me. So if she follows you, just quit out there. <clears throat> this crab, if he delays his attack, then wait a little bit and then pick up the shield. But otherwise, just pick up the shield and then come through this section. Go down and equip the Grass Crest shield, and you'll automatically have it equipped because your hand was already in the left slot. Put on some armor. You don't need more than 30%. There's no rolling to be had here. And you want to equip the Twin Blades. So here we are now. We've got Twin Blades and the two shields. Full armor. You don't need any resins for this fight. This fight's just the same every time. Okay, I'm gonna quit out here so I can show you guys the two different two different ways of fighting Sage. Now Sage can do instant soul mass, in which way you you just kill him as quick as possible. But if he doesn't, then you parry. I'll show you what happens. So you come in the fight, come over to him two-handed. 
Okay, look, this is the Cell Mass version. So wait for them to come out. Hit him three times. Roll any melees. One, two, three. So three, three, and then one, two. All right, heal up whatever damage you took. And then just go through and straight towards Deacons. See, that fight's super easy. If you get the Soul Mass, you might take damage. You might have to roll and merely straight after you roll to cancel him meleeing you. But it's just, again, it's practice safe filing the bosses. All right, <clears throat> come here. And then this is what happens if he doesn't do Soul Mass. So you'll run here, change to your parry shield, and wait for him to do a certain melee attack. Let's see. Sometimes he takes a bit of a time, sometimes he doesn't. So you want to roll that attack. Yeah, this is uh, this is basically you being trolled. Like, you'd be getting trolled right now. Because you're waiting for a certain melee attack and he's not doing it. Right, this is the one. Parry. Repost. Right. Change to two hand. Wait for him to spawn up. One, two, three, four. Alright. You would usually do four attacks there, but I waited a little bit too long to do my four attacks. If you wait too long, that's what happens. He teleports away. So I'm showing you what happens with Soul Mass. With Soul Mass, he's always there. He doesn't teleport away. If you parry, you need to make sure you get these four attacks straight after the parry. So I'll show, hopefully he doesn't do Soul Mass. Okay, he did Soul Mass. That's what you don't want. You don't want that when I'm trying to show you how to parry in a tutorial. But Soul Mass is probably the fastest way of doing this fight. If he gives you the Soul Mass, then just do what I did at the beginning. But if he gives you the parry attack, you want to parry and you want to make sure you get them four attacks off quick. You can't wait around like I did. So what you need to do is get here quick enough. Hopefully he melees. Parry. Repost. Don't wait around like I did. You can't wait around too long. You have to do one, two, three, four. So there you go, dead. Pretty easy parry, pretty easy kill. Go through here. Take off all your armor and change the shield to a staff. This way you're below 30% so you can roll further. So come off this rock, roll, roll again, pick up this armor and then roll this attack and you'll be fine. She does different attacks, you just need to learn it. Again, it's practice. I can't show you all 10 attacks of every single enemy. But yeah, I'm just showing you the general direction. So you want to put this armor on now. You don't need to go below 30. You might need to roll here, but you want to have your armor on here because you do take some good damage. Like, if I didn't have the armor on there, that would have been over half my health. Heal up if you're a bit worried. Okay, run past these dogs. Roll if they attack you. And then quit out here. Anywhere after this point. You want to quit out because the dogs will chase you and they will teleport and they will just kill you. Dogs just teleport a hundred times in this game. They're, they're the most broken enemy in this game because they actually just teleport in front of you and keep like keep going on you. So, yeah, quit out there. So make sure this is what your thing's looking like right now. Quit out on this door as well. Okay, now you want to spam A here so you skip the dialogue. And then light this bonfire. And then you want to turn around, start sprinting, take off all your armor except for your legs. Okay, this is in preparation for something. Now you want to hit these two while you're running. So you're doing a running L1. And then pick up this Esther shard. As soon as you've killed them, change from your sharp sword to your dagger. So this way you'll be below 30% but you'll still have a bit of armor on. The best poss that's what you want to aim for. You want to aim for the lowest possible percentage when you're rolling through areas with armor. So you want this dagger for a, in a minute. So you run through here. Run to the right of this guy. He never he never hits you off. Trust me, it's never happened to me. Run up here. Run to the left of this guy. Sometimes he does one attack that you have to always roll. So look out for that. Run up here. Down here. Up here. Make sure you've got stamina here. Get some stamina. Come here. Get some stamina again. And then roll here. When you get down here, you want to roll onto the statue. 
roll again. Hopefully he shoots again, this guy. Okay, if he shoots, that's good RNG. If, it, if he doesn't shoot, you have to be worried. Run to the left of this wall, so this guy hardly comes out. He came out for me there, but if you run closer to the wall like I, like I didn't do, he won't come out, so you won't have to roll. Watch out for this character behind you, you might have to roll, and you can strafe past this enemy most of the time, depending on what attack they do. Run to this door, and then quit out. If you don't quit out on that door, you're going to get absolutely gangbanned. But yeah, you're going to quit out on every door anyway. So running through areas is kind of simple, like i just shown, but sometimes you can get really bad attacks that hit you, and then you just get one shot. So you need to look out for running through areas. Just practice with safe files, running through areas, and different mob attacks and how you should react to them. It's just, again, a lot, a lot of practice. I've already said practice about 50 times in this video, but it's worth it, because that's, I'm telling you guys, that's what you got to do. All right, cast Spook here. Change to your shield so you've got stamina regen. And then put your dagger on two-handed. Now, you're going to want to pick up these this ring here, and then you want to roll off here. Roll, and then spam the weapon up. This way, you don't get slowed down in the swamp. This is the fastest way to go through the, sw uh, the swampy water. Now, you need to be a bit careful, because this guy sometimes flings poo like this at you. If he flings poo, just go from, like, to the side. This guy's going to attack. You need to make sure you have to be wary of him. And then put on your Lloyd Sword Ring while you're running between these two areas. Run a little bit into the swamp, and then as soon as you get slowed down, start doing your weapon art. Go between the legs of this giant, usually. I went to the right of him here, but it doesn't matter too much. Depends what attack he does. Alright, now take off the dagger, put your twin blades on, and then put your armor on. This shield here, this gives you better stamina regen. So if you have this equipped all the time, wherever possible, so then you don't have to wait for your stamina as much. This ring lets you do more damage. It gives you a 10% increase of damage. Might be a 10 or a 15. I think it's 10. Gives you 10% increase if you're at full HP. Now for this fight, you're going to want to always just run to the red. This is a really simple fight. I don't even need to make a save file. Just run to wherever the soul drops into and follow it. Alright. Now you want to always just... It's always a one hit. Now make sure you've got a bundle on here. You want to make sure you've always got a bundle. Because you're going to use it in the next part of the fight when the second phase spawns. Just look out for where the soul spawns, and then run straight to the middle here, and equip your bundle, and just hit this guy as quick as possible. There you go, dead. Easy fight, easy easy. So what you want to do here, is bone to last bonfire rest at that. Don't bone to fire link, bone to last bonfire rest at, and you can bone straight away here, you don't have to bone... Yeah, you don't have to bone... Uh... You don't have to wait for your bone, you can just bone really quickly. Talk to this guy, and then get walked into the DLC. As soon as you get walked in here, use your homeward bone, and bone to fire link. So straight away, bone to fire link shrine. Now the reason we do that is because it gives us, automatically, it gives us the bonfire in the DLC, so you don't have to walk out the cave. So when you go there later in the game, you'll be fine. Alright. Here we go from here, straight to High, War High Lord Warner. So RB once, straight to High Lord Warner. Now we're getting around just nearly halfway through the run. So you got to think the early game. I've sh I've spent a lot of time showing you how to get through the early game because the early game's pretty complicated. The early game has a lot of mm, a lot of reset points so it's a lot of skips a lot of things that can just make you reset your run as soon as you get to this point in the game you feel cushy after you've practiced quite a lot so like from here on till towards like a cyrus the run's pretty free like you're not really worried All right, for this part here what you need to do is make sure you've got this bundle on and you want to run through put your bundle on the bottom of the inventory and now you want to stop See these pillars here? You want to stop to the second last one before this middle of the bridge. So stop perfectly here. Use your bundle. One, two. And then one, two, three. This guy dies and you get his the Pontiff right eye ring. So you, you want to stand here basically. This is the middle of the bridge because it's got this thing here. 
and you want to, it's not this one, but this one, the thing that's got the thing sticking out of it. And you want to stand in line with this, one, two, like I did, and then walk forward, and then one, two, three. And you'll get the ring, which is here. This ring boosts attacks as you keep hitting someone. So when you're fighting a boss, if you're just doing this with a self sword Twin Blades, you're just going to get more and more damage the faster you keep hitting. So the more and more you hit, the more and more damage you do. So from here on out, you don't need the Twin Blades. Put the staff on. Take off all your armor except for the legs. And run towards the next skip. Take off this uh, bundle and put the skulls on. So this is what your inventory wants to look like before you get here. Run to the left of these guys here. If they attack, you can roll. He didn't attack, but if they attack, you can just roll. Get to these part in the steps and then quit out. Okay, now this is where I change my key bindings. What I do here... And I guess I guess Nems... Oh, no. Nems is... Don't want to skip that. Don't want to split there. <clears throat> what I do is I change my jump from right all to right control and I remember to do this before every single time I do this skip. The reason I do this is because right alt for me doesn't work properly with the jump so I need to change to right control. Don't forget if you fail a run any point past this point you have to rechange it to right alt because when you get to the Farron skip again you'll have the wrong key bindings. So what you want to do here is run into this corner and while you're running into it like just hold right look in this direction okay. Now People do these differently. I've completely changed my setup now. This setup's completely different to everyone else's, and I haven't failed it nearly. Yet. I haven't failed it in a run once, so and I've done a lot of runs. Might fail it in practice because I haven't practiced it too much, but in runs, never fails. You can use your mouse, but I use my controller here because it's not too precise, to be honest. Okay, so I'm running here. My health bar, okay? You've got this pillar here. If you look where my health bar is, there's like these curved, uh, what are they, I guess they're like mirrors, I don't know, the de decorations in the wall I guess, so you see they're curved right, there's the pinpoint of the top of one, and there's the pinpoint of the top of the other one, I have my health bar so it's in the middle between these two, this one here and this one here, that literally doesn't matter, like it could be anywhere in the middle here, like it could be here, um, it could be here, it could be here, anywhere like in the middle between these two, and what you want to do, is while you're walking walking right, press spook, hold sprint and forward, run forward and then jump. And you'll fall down here. Now that setup, I'm the jump is very important. The timing of the jump is very important. But that lineup will always work. You can jump you actually it's very lenient on your jump. You can, it's more lenient than any of the other setups I've had. So use that setup, get used to it. And you'll, you'll basically just have to time the jump. So make sure you cast Spook. And while your Spook is casting, hold W and sprint while the Spook is casting. So then you straight away sprint as soon as the Spook is finished. And then press jump with right control. And it's literally the only the, the way you do that skip. It's really simple. Just keep practicing and you'll get used to it. I, you wouldn't normally use the, lose the health that I just lost now. Because you'd have Spook still. But I was busy explaining. So run to this, you've just skipped the whole of Irifal now. So you're all the way down in the lake, and you're at the bonfire at Distant Manor. So light this bonfire, and then start making your way towards Pontiff. So you've got these skulls ready for what's about to happen. So as soon as you come in this water, make sure you've got full endurance, and just start rolling. Because it's faster than just walking through the water. Get your stamina back again, and then just roll again. As soon as you get out of the water here, you can just sprint. Run straight through here, you'll never get hit. They, they, them guys never hit you. Change to your twin blades. Change to the shield on the second part. You want the, you want the parry shield here. And then you want full armor, because this part's scary. So walk to the left of this guy, he'll do an attack sometimes. Sometimes he doesn't. If he does do an attack, just roll once. Okay, now you want to roll through, come through here, and when you come through here, you want to throw this skull as soon as you see these dogs. All right, there you are, see the dogs? Throw the skull to the left, and they'll go towards it. Run up to the rods to the right here, wait for your stamina, and then run to the right of these dogs here. Sometimes they'll bite you, and you'll get absolutely fucked up, but you need to be careful. As soon as you get around this corner, you can quit. See, I nearly got killed there, like I nearly got completely chomped up, but... 
<clears throat> it's pretty lenient. Like with the armor on, you can tank about two hits. So you need to be careful there. And then quit out to de-aggro the dogs and get around the corner. Now I'm going to say something really important. You want to have full HP for nearly every boss before you start it. It's very important because you get the most damage that you possibly can in the fight. If you're, if you're at full HP, you do 10% more damage with this ring on. So it's very important to have it on. So now you're past this part, you can heal up, get full HP, and get ready to fight Pontiff. So come here, dodge this guy, and then go through the fog gate. So I'm going to quit out now, just in case. I'm going to quit out and make a save file, just to show you guys the fight. If anything goes wrong, I can reload it and show you. But yeah, you're, you're up to Pontiff now, so you're about nearly halfway through the game. About 10 minutes before halfway through the game. Now you want to run here. Change to your parry shield. And then time this parry. What I do is I listen for 1, 2 and then 3. I'll show you again. I'll show you the parry. What you want to listen for. I listen for his feet but you can use it. You can use visual cues. It's just practice again. But I listen to his footsteps, okay? You hear one footstep, then you hear two footsteps. So he does two quick steps. And then as soon as you... As soon as... Uh, so you hear one footstep, you hear two step, footsteps. When you would hear the foot, third footstep, that's when you parry. So you hear dun, dun. And then you think the next one would come up, then you parry. That's how I do it. It works every time, I never miss it. So listen to the footsteps here. Look. One, two, boom third one that's when i parry repost him stand in the center of him hit him twice once twice get out the parry sword parry again he can do a different attack there he can thrust his short sword and then do another attack you want to get behind him and then one two three four sometimes you can't kill him before this explosion so just back away hit him once hit him again he's dead I'm going to show you what happens if he does the other attack. That was one attack, right? After the two attacks that you do. When you do the two L1s, he can do two different attacks. He can do the one, the instant attack, like I, he did and I parried. Or he can do a sword thrust, and then he can do an attack straight after that. And you need to parry the attack after the sword thrust. So hopefully I can get it here. So, one, two, three... Parry, uh, repost. Do one, two, and then uh, he done the exact same attack again. So that attack is most common, but he can do another attack and I'll hopefully get it. I'll just keep fighting him until I get it. But yeah, <clears throat> this fight can go one of two ways, basically. And it can go one of two ways in the middle of the fight and it can go one of two ways at the end of the fight. At the end of the fight, you might need to wait for the explosion and then go back in like I did at the first time, or you can just kill him before the explosion. You can tell by the amount of health he's got. So, parry this. Repost. He's, I don't think he's going to do the attack now. <laughs> It'd just be just my luck, but... One, two. Uh, it's the same attack. Keep going until I get it. It's very important, because you guys need to see how the other way of the fight goes. If I don't get it this time, I'm just going to carry on. But what happens is he thrusts his blue sword. You you roll it and then you parry about a second after. And that's again, make a save file for this boss and practice and practice and practice. Because that is the only way you're going to learn. Not from just watching me. Watching me parry is not going to help you parry. It just shows you what to do. Okay, this is the attack. Perfect. Okay, that is what happens if he doesn't do the other attack. So you want to get behind him here, and you want to attack him as soon as he gets up. Okay, this is the quick kill. Okay, he's dead before he explodes. And the reason that is, is because I get the attacks off as quick as possible. Okay, I split here as soon as the gate goes down. And you want to change from that shield to the shield of want very quickly. Wait for the souls to come in, and then change back. Now the reason why you change to this shield is because this shield gives you 20% more souls than you receive. So when you kill a boss, you want to change to this shield. 
And I only do it on certain bosses because it's only worth it on certain bosses. So I do it on Yorm. Yorm is the first boss that I... No, not Yorm. Pontiff is the first boss that I do this on. So change to this shield. You'll be over 70%, so you'll do this little fat waddle. Look at this. You'll roll like this. But because you're not actually rolling or waiting for your endurance to come back, then it's fine. So just do it right as it's about to come in. As soon as you get the souls, change back. You'll be below 70 and you'll have the stamina shield again. So this is what I do here. I take off this and turn it to the staff because I'll be using it. And I'll turn off, take off all my armor so I'm below 30% here. Take off these skulls because you don't need them. And that's how your inventory should look right now. Just like this. Run up this right side of the stairs. Come straight through here. Sometimes them guys down there will attack you, you just have to roll. Go to the right of these stairs here. <clears throat> Come down here. Roll off. So now we're going to go for the ashes that let us equip, uh, upgrade our sword even more. So we'll pick up these ashes here, the Easterners ashes. Come up these steps. Nothing can hit you here really. That guy always misses. Go to the right of this guy. And this guy will pull out his sword. He never really attacks you. He always misses. Come off here and jump just as you're about to come off. Roll again. Sometimes you'll need to roll on that because that guy will attack you. But he didn't attack me this time. Run to this lever. As soon as you pull this lever, quit out. Because it will summon the elevator instantly. Now, this is very important, okay? <clears throat> this game, when you, when you speed run, the game crashes twice. Now, I'm going to tell you, there's two places that I always uh, close my game so it never crashes. Because the game's broken, it crashes twice whenever you speedrun. So, instead of loading straight back in here, you want to quit out, close the game down. As soon as the game's closed down, open it back up. Takes a few seconds to open back up. Takes quite a few seconds to open back up, actually. <laughs> but yeah, as soon as you spawn back in here, the elevator will be down. So as soon as you pull a lever or do an action, the action carries on through the quit out. So load back in instantly. You won't crash now. The reason why you do this is because if you crash on the top of this elevator, you'll lose 24 seconds. So you want to make sure your game doesn't crash in really bad spots. And this is one of them. So you want to come up here. Make sure you heal up. Make sure you're full health here. Because you're going to fight a boss in a minute. And you shouldn't take damage on the way there. Pull this lever. And then as this lever is being pulled. Pop the deconsole. Wait until you're near the edge of the elevator. And there you go. Pop the deconsole. Now you want to put on all your armor. And now you're just going to run towards Aldrich. You can take that bonfire if you're scared. Depends really. This guy is always going to do like a dash. Just run past this. That never hits. That always misses. If he does it, he does a really rare attack sometimes. Probably like once in a hundred runs. Just roll. You'll get the timing down. But that's really rare. That attack usually always happens. You just run past it. Okay now this is where we dupe another soul. Because we've got the staff. We can put our staff on. And that because we use the deconsole, we can dupe it again by just throwing a knife here. And we want to jump off the edge here, just as you reach this part of the stairs. Roll, and then open up this chest so you can get an, es an extra Esther shard. Now run towards Aldrich. Dodge these three fireballs by running right of them. And then go through the middle here. I'm going to quit out here just so I can show you the Aldrich fight. So yeah, the further you get in this game, the less and less quit outs you're going to be doing. And the more and more like running into bosses you'll be doing. So it's quite cushy this mid games. Not much to do, just running into bosses and killing them. So put your charcoal pine resin before you go in the fight. <clears throat> and then go in. Run towards this guy and you want to get as many hits off here as before he teleports. There's different openings that you can get. This is one of them. So roll. Hit him here. 
And you want to hit the body because it does the most damage. You don't want to be hitting the tail. So just hit the body as much as you can. Okay, he will teleport to the other side of you. Always towards the left here. And you want to run to the left of him here. And you want to hit him. There's different attacks you're going to have to get used to here. And hit the body because it's the most damage. Okay, perfect. And now you want to bone to the last bonfire. As soon as he hits the ground. You can do it a little bit before, but just to be safe, wait till he hits the ground and then bone to the last bonfire. And then you can start going towards Yom. Now that boss fight, he can teleport three times if you get a bad opening. or a... You can get a bad opening on the first phase where he does arrows and you have to go around to the side of him. Or in the second phase, he can instantly teleport away. and It's really bad RNG and it's unlucky, but that can happen as well. But like I said again, I'm not going to show you every single possible boss scenario because there's so many. That's what makes this game so fun to run because there's so many different scenarios you need to you need to adapt to. So just make safe files again, like I say, for the bosses and uh, practice as much as you can before you do runs. And now start to run towards Yorm. We can unequip all this. And this is what I do in my menu here. I put blossoms on. Then I put gold pine resin and then I put knives show you what my menu looks like in a minute run to the right of this guy sometimes he'll drain a little bit of your health it's fine you've got loads of Estus run to the right of this guy now you want to pick up these pal pine resins pick these up because you're going to be using them on a boss later open up this gate use your staff here so you've got spook and now this is another spook quit out that we're going to use that was similar that I used before vault. So you've got spook on. You're going to fall off the edge here. And as soon as your body's about to hit the floor, quit out. There you go, you'll hear the scream. And that means you've performed the... If you quit out while you hear the scream, you've done it. <clears throat> now we're going to go to yawn. Run across this railing here. Get a bit of stamina, then roll across. This guy can do various attacks here. He can do a, a really nice attack, or he can do an annoying attack. This one's fine, you just roll it. Jump off the edge here. If you've got full HP, don't jump off the edge there, because then you won't have to heal. You can just walk down the right side. But if you've got if you've got enough if you've not got full health, then don't worry about it. But you wanna keep full health in a minute. So what you'll do here, pick up these bone shards. Light this bonfire. Drink an Estus so you've got full HP for the fight after Yawn. Put Spook on and then jump off. And then do Spook quit again. So this way you're just skipping different areas with Spook quit out and you're getting to the bus faster. <clears throat> now let me show you here. You want to Spook here and then take off all your armor. That will always miss you, that fireball. Roll here, then roll again. And then roll again, and roll again. So roll whenever you're landing. So then you never, you're never like in an animation of landing. All right, here we can put on all our armor on, except for our helmet. If we put our helmet on, we'll be overcome, over encumbered when we pick up the sword in the Yom fight. So I'm gonna quit out here just in case I have to show you this boss a few more times. <clears throat> But there's a, a little trick to this boss that we use. The trick is that we make him do a certain attack and we manipulate around it. So what you do here, make sure your inventory looks like this. Put Aldrich's soul here while you're running. And run over. As soon as you pick up this Storm Ruler. Okay, he's letting block you here, it's a bit trolly. Pick up this Storm Ruler and straight away equip it by going left. Charge up the Storm Ruler but after you run through his legs. You can roll the stamp there, but it's a bit trolly, again. Wait for certain attacks. Charge up the shield. And I'll show you how you want to manipulate this boss. Alright, so he's going to go straight into second phase here. Alright, now charge up this sword. Hit him here. And then stand at his feet. He'll either stamp or he'll do a down slash attack. So this is the attack that you want to abuse quite a lot. If he does that, don't attack straight away because you can get absolutely destroyed there. Right, go between his legs here. 
hopefully he doesn't stamp and hopefully he does this attack. Perfect. That attack is what you need because you can just walk away and then kill him simply. Change to your cell swords, put your helmet on, and pop this soul. That's what you, that's the soul you want to pop. I couldn't pop it there because I had it equipped. Make sure you don't equip it and make sure you pop it in the inventory screen. So you can split now while this cutscene's going on. You get teleported here, okay? What you would have already have done, you've already have popped this soul here. So you can pop this soul while the boss is dying. So while Yorm's dying, pop that. As soon as you spawn in here, hit her once. You spook. Throw your knife. Put your shield back on. Pick up this and then use gold prime resin. So you want to do all that in a quick motion, basically. This boss, go to the left of him. You don't want to stand the sword side of this boss. That's unlucky. He staggers at 8 hits, but he does a twist as well. If he does this twist, wait for him to stay on the right side and then wait for him to go round. He spins round 7 times. Okay, now that was a really poor fight. I'm going to show you why that was a poor fight. <clears throat> what you need to do is you want to try and stagger him with 8 hits before he transforms. And the reason you do that is you get 6 hits and then just try and hit and stagger him before he can pull the swords out. Because then you can get a quick kill. But mainly what you want to do is you want to keep it full health. And you want to... I'll show you the quick way of doing The actual way of doing this now. Basically. But there's so many different scenarios. Like I said, it's practice, practice, practice. And learn in your own way. So yeah, run through the sword shield here. Wait for him to do an attack. Sometimes he'll go straight to second phase after one hit, like this. So this way you just want to go closer. And you want to pull this up. Wait for him. Hopefully he does... Okay, if he does the stamp, that's fine. Because you can just roll and then manipulate him again by standing by his feet. You want to use this. Okay, and this is what you want to do. You want to charge up, and as soon as you finish charging up, uh, you want to let go and then charge up again, because that way you can instantly attack. You don't have to wait for your stamina. Hopefully he keeps done the slam. Okay, he does the slam. Okay, now walk over to him. Charge up. Now you have to let go and then go again. That's the only way you can actually attack, or you're going to be out of stamina. Put this on, put this on, and then pop the Eldritch Soul. Okay, that's the perfect way of doing this fight, just like what I just did there. Pretty much just manipulating his character to do a certain attack. Changing to your sword, your helmet, and popping the soul. So you spook here, change back to your shield, put the gold pine resin on, and then pick that up, put it on. Run to the left of him. Sometimes he'll do this, which is kind of annoying, but you just have to deal with it. If he grabs, just jump, uh, roll it. Two, three, four, five, six. Now, I can get eight hits in here and stagger him. Perfect. So you get loads of attacks in. You want to stay to the right, so he spins right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Alright, perfect. Alright, that boss can be a little bit finicky. It's just going to be a lot of practice. They weren't great fights, both of them, but you want to get used to the fight, basically. Get your Shield of Want on. So, change to your Shield of Want while you're climbing this ladder, or just after this ladder, to be honest. It doesn't really matter. I put it on before the ladder. Put the shield on, the stamina shield on, and then run towards this bon bonfire. Now, the best thing to do here is stay to the left of this guy. As soon as he attacks, walk right. Stay to the left of this guy. As soon as he attacks, roll. That way you'll always get through. And then just quit as soon as you get to this bonfire. Perfect. 
<clears throat> so now you want to light this bonfire. If you're low on Estus, which you might be, then you can rest, but you can just heal if not. Three Estus will be enough for Osiris. Change to no armor here, just before you roll off. There you go, you get a long roll. And then put the assassin armor on. Okay, the assassin armor you need for this swamp up ahead. And now here's a one trick that we're going to be doing throughout the run that we only do once. So what we do here is we go in the inventory, go to Yorm Soul, say use and then say no. And then we're going to go on the bomb, go on the elevator, cast Spook, and we're going to use the knife. And then we're going to change to our shield and then walk off. The reason why we do that is because it gives us the Yorm Soul without having to pop it. See, now you can pick up this Esther Shard here. This is an Esther Shard, but I don't pick it up in my run. But that's just, if you want more healing, then you can pick that up. That's just a safety thing. Run down here, stop, don't roll off, pick this up. And then jump as you're about to come off here. This guy isn't normally here. He's just here because I waited. So what you want to do is run to this. Pick up this pal pine, uh, human pine resin and run straight through the middle. This guy isn't normally here so you don't have to worry about this guy. I'm going to quit out because they aren't normally there. So you just don't have to worry about them. Forget about this part right now. The only reason they're in this rotation right now is because I showed you where the Esther shot is. If you just go as soon as possible they're never there. So you'll always be safe walking through here. Make sure you're full HP for this fight. And then when you get down here, stay to the right side when you jump off here so this guy doesn't aggro. And then walk to the left. Does that attack, roll. But if he doesn't, you can just walk through and then twist right. Put your Herald armor on for this boss. And then enter the boss fight. I'm going to quit out because this boss is my, most hate, my second most hated boss because... He has an attack that instant charges and destroys you. He takes off three quarters of your health and you can't dodge it. There's there's no way to dodge it and you don't know when it's you rarely know when it's coming. You can just do it out of the blue. So when you enter this fight, use a green blossom and use the gold pine resin. Now when he comes towards you, you can roll that attack, walk towards it. One, two, three. It's six hits to stagger him. Or five. Six to stagger. And it'll usually transform straight after these staggers. So you want to try and time the staggers, to be honest. It's really important. Hopefully he doesn't do the instant charge. I wouldn't put it past him. There you go. There's the instant charge that you can't dodge. You want to get as close to him as possible if he does that. But he could just completely troll and go everywhere. So here he is just going absolute full YOLO. Let's use a throw knife to finish him off if I can. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, that boss is really temperamental. He, he he's really annoying. He can, he can roll a lot. He can run around the place, but you you're gonna want to try and time the staggers as best as you can. Every six hits he staggers, so do six hits, and then keep counting how many hits you're doing, so you know when you're gonna stagger him. So then you can hit him as many times while he's staggered. And then when you kill the boss, you wanna you want him to have changed to the shield. I'll do the boss fight again just to show you what you wanna do. Because it's very important when you quit out on this boss. Because if you quit out too early, then you get sent to the beginning of the arena and lose too many, too much time. <clears throat> so I'll show you the importance of this. Come in here. We're just about halfway through the run right now as well, so there's not much left. But we're at, we're not at the hard part yet. <laughs> Come through here. If he does this attack, you want to go behind him. It is Tau. The best you can do. You can't go near him when that attacks out. If you whiff attacks like that, it's really bad. And this attack is the worst he can do because you can't go near him. And if he's near a wall like this, there's legitimately, legitimately nothing you can do. Because you're just going to get destroyed by the ice and you can't go behind him because there's a wall. So just try and stay as close as you can. If he does the spin, you just roll. 
And you want to hope that he just doesn't do the instant charge. That's what you're wait hoping that doesn't happen. But there it is. If he does that twice in a row and you've got no Estus, you're completely stuffed. You're just dead. There's nothing you can do. Now, if he does the instant charge now, I'm dead. But luckily enough, uh, he didn't. Might have to use throwing knives to finish him off again. There you go. Now, you want to put the shield on. And you do not want to go near this door yet. Stay here. Stay before the steps. Wait for that to come up. And then go and quit out. If you do that, you, you won't ever start at the beginning of the arena. So stand before the steps. Wait for it to say the boss has been defeated. Walk towards the door. Then quit out. And you'll always just be on this door as soon as you spawn him. So now this health really sucks. Because this guy can hurt you. So I might die here, we'll see. But you want to change to your other shield here as soon as you've spawned in. Alright, nice. <clears throat> Pick this up. Change to that. You want to have Path of the Dragon on this attack. Take off all your armor so you roll further. I'm going to spook because I don't have enough health to live here. But normally you always have enough health. Get on this bonfire. And then you want a bone to Ponti uh, Profaned Capital. So it's three times left. One, two, three. Straight to Profane Capital. <clears throat> now the reason why we're going to Profane Capital is because we want to go to Nameless, basically, the Nameless area. But you want to jump across here from this bonfire and just walk to the left here. And you get a nice little shortcut. Put all your armor on and change to a short sword. Keep, keep the inventory the exact same because you'll get more gold pine resin in a minute. So you want to keep that there. Come through here. As soon as you come through here, you're going to want to open this door up and quit out as soon as you open it. So open it up and then quit out. Otherwise, you're going to get all your health drained by the jailers. Come through here. Pick up these ashes. And then start right walking towards Wyvern. Okay. Open up the menu for your gestures while you're running. As soon as you get to this map, bang, sit down. You can spam start here because it'll instantly skip the cutscene, but you can just wait. It's not like you can't react to the cutscene coming up. Just spam start here. The timer still goes in this te this teleport, even though it's not actual in-game. There's only a few teleports this happens in the game, where it carries on in-game timer. So, uh, now it's time for Wyvern. This boss is not really complicated, but uh, everyone uses the backup now, so I'm just going to show you the backup version. There's no reason to do YOLO. It's, on average, 10 seconds faster if you get perf and luck, perfect luck. And you're not going to get perfect luck. <laughs> I've run this game enough to, to know that now. So I'm going to quit out here just, just for tutorial's sake. But you, you want to pull this lever. Quitting out on this lever does nothing. It's one of the few levers in the game where you pull and quit out. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't open the gate up. So pull this open. Run to the right of this door. And now you're going to want to run through the Wyvern's legs and then run towards the right. So run between the legs. Sometimes he'll, he might do this jump up. Kind of annoying. That's the slowest thing he can do. And then start popping your souls if you have to wait. Stand to the, just to the left of this grass here. He'll turn. And then when he turns, he'll pull his head. And then he'll pull his head one more time. Now start running as soon as his head goes down. Jump on here and jump right. So walk up that slope, jump right, and you'll land straight on his head. Now change to the Shield of Want. Fall down here. And then pick up this ring. And you'll teleport. Now as soon as you teleport. As soon as you teleport, quit out. Because it's faster. <clears throat> now... Wyvern, that literally is the... Oh, there's no point in me showing that because that's literally what you need to do. It's perfect. 
what I just showed you there. Come in, walk between his legs. Sometimes he'll jump up in the sky. Sometimes he'll just do an attack. It's faster if he does an attack because then he recovers quicker. Stand to the left of that grass. When he turns, he puts his head to the left. And then when he starts putting his head down to breathe fire, start running towards that railing. When you get on the railing, jump off onto the back of his head. Simple works all the time. You just need to practice it again. All right, take off all your armor here. There, yeah. Take off your sword and put on your legs. So keep just your legs on. You don't need anything else except for your shield and your staff here. And now we're just going to run straight towards here. Roll this attack. That's something you need to roll. Now we're going to come across this bridge. And we're going to come up to a rock lizard. When you come to the lizard, you want to run to the right of it. And then roll to the left. So the lizard starts going towards the right. And then you can roll to the left. So right, right, stay to the right. Then roll to the left. Now wait for this dragon. I wait till I get to these like branches. And then I roll. And you'll go through. Sometimes you'll take the damage. But you won't die. Sometimes you skip the damage. It depends how perfect your roll is. And then just run through here. I heal up here because it's a little bit scary. Come here. Regen stamina. This guy's going to start shooting at you. If you wrote to the right here, sometimes he misses. But you just keep an eye on him. If he doesn't attack that you need to roll, then roll it. This will miss me, I think. Yeah. Pick this bonfire up. I'm going to quit out here because <coughs> if I die, I'm going to go really far back. So I'm just going to show you where you need to go from here now. You don't need to quit here. Run to the left here. There's going to be a guy behind this wall, so you need to be careful. He's not there right now because I quit. So this guy might attack you, be careful. Stay to the left here, and you want to roll this guy's attack. So roll the lizard, usually he attacks you. Pick these up and then bone straight to sh Shrine Bonefire. Sometimes you might need to quit out there after you've picked up the ashes and then bone back. But most of the time you can just pick it up and bone back. So as soon as you're here now, <clears throat> come here. Now this is a saint I need to tell you. This, ha this lady that you level up, if she's sitting down you lose 4 seconds. <coughs> There's nothing you can do. It's just bad RNG. So if she's on the floor you have to wait for her to get up. Before you level up. So instead of her standing here. She stands here like this usually. This one's the faster version. But it doesn't really matter too much. Come here. Sell everything. You do not need to sell the crystal sage soul. That's the, you can skip save, selling that. Because it will save you some menuing. Give all the ashes. Just spam A on the ashes. As soon as you've given all the ashes. It takes you straight back up to purchased item. So go on there. Buy 11 bundles. Okay, so 11 bundles, 12 gold pine resin, 11 chunks, and 6 large titanite shards. And that's all you need to buy. Walk off, and then upgrade your weapon to plus 9. So you're on plus 9 right now. And you've got 2 Estus that you can use to upgrade. You can have 3 like, if you pick up that one that I showed you. So now go level up. You want to get 22 Vigor and 22 Endurance. Yeah, you could have got 23 there, but there's no point really. Uh, you want to burn your Undead Bone Shard here. And after you finish burning it, burning it, just uh, go straight to Lothric Castle, which is left once. Go to there so we can fight Dragon Slayer and then Princes. Alright, so what you want to do here is put your armor back on. So put the sword on, put the armor back on. Uh, make sure you're not over 70%. Go to the right of this guy here. Hold your shield up just in case. Regen your stamina about here. And then you want to stay left a little bit. And then turn, turn right just as the second arrow is about to hit you. And you'll never get hit through there. So that's pretty consistent. I've, it, you rarely get hit. But hold your shield up just in case. And it will block it. 
and you want to quit out just as the you get to the bottom of these steps here just as you get to like just to the bottom of them just as the fire is about to be uh put on you as soon as you load in here just run straight back in so just run over here put your swords on make sure they're actually equipped put some palpine resin on because you'll need this You're always going to take full damage here, so you need to heal up for full after you've taken damage. Sometimes he attacks, he didn't even attack for some reason, so sometimes you get lucky, sometimes he's a bit docile. Yeah, and I'm just going to quit out here just in case I die and I have to redo it. But yeah, heal up. Make sure you've got everything equipped. Okay. So you're going to want to have Palpine Resin on before this boss fight, and you're going to want to be full HP before this boss fight. The plus, the 5 in the brackets is how many hits it takes to stagger this boss, which is really important. You, you're going to have to get 5 hits off to get him into the second phase. And what you want to do here is you're going to want to juke his shield at the beginning so he goes a certain way for you. So go up to this bit of grass, put the Palpine Resin on, wait for him to do an attack, walk right, and sw swivel round. It three times, that will miss. Four, five. He'll he'll stagger at five. Get behind him. One, two, three. Wait for him to do this attack. One. Wait for him to do another attack. Sometimes he holds his shield up, so just hit him so it forces him to do something. Alright. Sometimes he can just roll around a lot and do loads of attacks, but you should be fine. There you go, dead. So there you go, there's Slayer dead. Like I said, <clears throat> when you practice, you, you'll know how to fight every boss. It's just a matter of going and going again. So as soon as you finish that boss, get on this door, quit out, and then split. It doesn't matter when you split, it's all up to you, it's all relevant to you. So you don't have to split or I split, you can just choose. But I usually split where when the timer is stationary, and the timer is stationary when you quit out, so it's always going to be accurate that way. Okay, now I heal here. No, you don't need to heal here, but I like to because this part's pretty scary. Take your tw you want as much armor as possible here, so you want to take off your twin blades, and then make sure you've got this on. All right now, you this steel of protection, the ring steel of protection. You should have put that on earlier, but I forgot to. Put that on. You want to put that on as soon as you pick it up, and you want to make sure that when you're fully equipped, you want to change your Herald Gloves to Assassin Gloves. I'll show you in a minute when I'm fully fully uh, armoured up for Princes. So you want to run to the right here, regen stamina, run up these stairs, be careful of this guy in the distance, he might shoot you here. So run up here, say to the left. Okay, now this guy's got, if he attacks, juke it, stay left, and then keep running. Sometimes that guy with the sword will hit you, you need to roll it. Again, these are just little things that you need to be aware of and just know, as soon as you know every attack of every mob, <clears throat> you know all the possible scenarios, you'll know exactly how to get through areas. It's just a matter of dying to them, to be honest. I couldn't tell you how many times I've died in this archives when I was first learning. And I, I, I rarely die now. If I die, actually I couldn't tell you the last time I died. It's probably been like over four months since I died here. But when I first started running this game, I died probably like, I don't know, 10 times a day <laughs> going through this area. So, like, it's just a matter of learning, man. Don't be disheartened if you're struggling. I mean, look at my time now. I'm 20 minutes away from world record, and I've spent all the time showing you how to do stuff. I'm showing you, like, <clears throat> I don't know, showing you how to do certain, certain things on bosses. I'm standing still. Like... You can get a nice time on this game without having to aim straight away for a world record. You you know, you can be proud of a sub two hour run or you can be proud of a just over two hours, you know, like that's a good run, you know. But <clears throat> I'm just showing you how to do it as fast as possible. Be careful of these guys, they can really fuck you up. You can grab this uh bon you can grab this elevator and grab the uh, bonfire just after Dragon Slayer if you wanna have a shortcut in case you die here. Because then you don't have to run all the way back up. 
So that's just a, a peach strat if you want to do it. But when you've practiced and played the game enough, you, you're never scared of dying of princes because when you've learned princes well enough, you'll never die to them because they're really easy to manipulate. So you want to make sure you've got no armor here, like below 30, so you're rolling further. Quit out on this door <clears throat> and get ready to fight princes. <clears throat> Oh no, you have to fight Slayer, Princes, Cinder, Old Demon King, and then Champion, and Nameless, and then you're done with a vanilla game. <laughs> I, f I completely forgot about the side mi the side bosses, but they're really... It's because you kill them so quickly. Anyway, so get your Soul Sword Twin Blades on. Get all your armor on. Hey, look, this is what happens if you've got the ring on. If you have this ring on, you'll go above 70%. So what you need to do is change this these gloves to Assassin Gloves, or, alternatively, take off the Staff. But <clears throat> I don't really like taking off the staff because sometimes I forget to put it back on. So, in truth, I just keep the gloves on. Doesn't make much of a difference. But yeah, okay, this boss. This boss is really, really fun to fight, in my opinion. Make sure you're full HP, like this. <clears throat> and what you're going to want to do for this boss is have gold pine resin, and you're going to not lock onto the boss, and you want to stay behind the boss. Because this way you can strafe him. And he teleports less. So if you stay behind him, you can strafe certain attacks. And if you stay behind him, it stops him from teleporting. So you're not having to run after him. So it's the quickest way you can fight this boss. And there's two openings on the first phase. There's one where he does an instant slam, which you just need to learn the timing of. And it's the best attack you can get. Or he does two side swipes into a teleport, which is the worst one, but you can still deal with it as well. So I'll show you now. See what I get. So put gold pan resin on. Lock onto him. Okay, that's the slow one. So two attacks. Hit him here. He'll teleport. And then roll, rolling L1. Stay behind him and stay locked off. So keep keep staying behind him. And if he goes in the front of you, just twist with him. Certain attacks you need to roll like that one, but you'll learn it. Alright, there's his first phase dead. See how quick and easy that was? Because I've practiced the boss. Alright, here he's going to instant teleport. You want to stay locked on when he teleports. That's the only time you want to stay locked on. As soon as he teleports, lock on. Because then you can follow him. You want to hit the guy in the back here. Make sure you're hitting the guy as much as you can. Okay, this is this is a really good fight. Alright, now change to your shield. To shield of want. And then pop the dragon's armor. Dragon slayer armor. Soul. Listen for the boom. And then you can bone. Okay, you hear that boom? As soon as you hear that boom, you're safe to teleport back. So teleport straight to Firelink as soon as you hear that boom sound. Make sure you've got this shield on. Okay, now as soon as you load back in here, take off this, put on this, and take off all your all your armor. When you take no, don't take off all your armor, sorry. Take off take off everything except for your legs. So as soon as you lo load in here, take off everything except for your legs and replace your shield. So that way you're below 30%. And the reason why is because there's two animation skips here. And I'll show you them. I'll make a save file just in case I fuck them up. But what you need to do is it's very similar to the gold pine resin skip I showed you really early on in the tutorial. When you're running near something near an edge and you can pick it up or press A, you can skip the animation if you fall and press A at the same time. So let me show you here, right? You can put this, you can just put the souls on, right? You can just offer the Cinder of a Lord, and it takes like ten sec, five seconds for you to give the soul over. But if you come up here and you sprint off the edge, not this one, if you come over here and sprint off this edge and spam A, it will place the soul for you, but you don't go in the animation. So let me try and show you. Okay, look, you can skip it semi like this. So that's a semi-skip because I fell off the edge... And I pull it on. But you can be fully sprinting off and get it on. So I'll show you maybe with this one. See, there you go. It's on. Perfect. I didn't go in the animation at all. Because I got it perfectly as I fell off. So that's just practice again. You can't do it with this one. This one you have to put the animation. So look how long this animation is. And how much time you save by skipping it. If you do it twice, you save 10 seconds. So it's very important. As soon as you've given all the souls, run straight to the, f the handmaiden. Spam A, purchase, press RT, so your menu goes flying down, and then 
down once and right twice by the slab. You get this slab by placing all the souls on the thrones. And then come here and upgrade to plus 10 and run straight to Cinder. Soon you've done that, just put the put all your stuff back on. Come here, and then this is another skip here. That was a lot of skips. <laughs> but as soon as you come in this cutscene, okay, make sure you've got the Homeward Bones equipped. Okay, as soon as you press A on this bonfire and you get the cutscene, press start to skip the cutscene. And as soon as you do that, press X, down, A. And you'll bone to the last bonfire while you're in the cutscene. So I'll show you. So here we go. A, skip, X, down, A. And you can hear the bone go off, okay? You have to do that quick enough. So I'll split here now. But you need to do that quick enough and you'll instantly teleport to Cinder. You'll skip having to go to the bonfire up there and having to lie here and then come here. So that's a nice little glitch that you can do. So make sure you've got everything equipped again. I put the staff back on and keep the assassin gloves. And you're going to want to use a blossom for this fire with a gold pine resin. So let me quit out just before this fight. This fight is very detrimental. <clears throat> what can happen with this fight is he can change his staggers. He can change his phases. So you're going to have to learn all the different phases and all the different attacks of every phase. And again, I'm sorry, but it's going to take a lot of hours <laughs> and a lot of practice for you to learn every attack and how to deal with it. So I'm going to have to just fight him, go past him, and hopefully you can see some of the attacks I roll or strafe and learn from it. But... There's so many different attacks. I could I could honestly have an hour long tutorial on, on this boss and tell you every attack you roll, every attack that you don't roll, that you can strafe and it, it's just it's too convoluted uh, yeah, convoluted. So you really need to just practice this yourself. But I'll show you what happens in a good fight. Put the blossom on here, put the GPR on, cold pine resin, go to, roll this attack, roll this attack, L1, roll. Okay, now this is... Okay, this one you can twist. Twist with it. Okay, some attacks you need to tank. Strafe that one. And he staggers usually at 6 or 7 hits. It changes. It's the only boss that has different stagger timings. A lot of attacks you need to roll. But honestly, it's probably worth tanking some of these hits. Because you get your endurance back. Alright, so here he is. When he staggers, heal up. Move away. And use your GPR. So now wait for this to blow up. And wait right near the end and then roll. Because it won't hurt you. One, two, three. If you can't get more than four attacks in. Just roll away like this. This is a safety version. But you can stagger him out of this attack. See I, I would have staggered him on five hits. So it's a bit risky. But it depends. Right, now the boss is dead. Put your shield of want on. And then pop this soul. The, the prince's soul. And light the bonfire. Right, so as soon as you link this. And that's when I split. But say no to this. And it will take you straight back to fire link. So you can carry on the run. If you click yeah there. You've lost the run. <laughs> so don't do that. Come on here. And then go straight to great F belfry. Straight to nameless king. I mean, if you're this far into the tutorial, then you're very adamant on running this game. So don't worry too much. You've, you've gone past Fire and Skip, which is really annoying. You've gone past a lot of the hard bosses. You've gone past a lot of the technical skips. This is where you start cleaning up, basically. You start killing Nameless, which is pretty easy. You kill Old Demon King, which is free. You kill Champion, who's free to kill. Then you go to the DLC. You do a few skips. You fight a lot of annoying bosses, and then the run's over. So... It's not too bad, but the early game is the main the main hard part of this run. When you get here, it's just sort of easy going. You, you destroy a lot of the bosses because of the damage you have. So what you need to do here is pull this. You don't quit out on this lever. Jump down. Make sure you've got the human pine resin equipped. Change that for the pal pine. And with this fight, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a save file here. But for this fight... The opening is really important. If you get the really good opening, you save a lot of time. If you get the bad opening, you, you lose a lot of time. So, 
Again, there's a lot of RNG in this game that you... It's just luck. But, you know, you, you need to you need to deal with bad RNG. Because you're not going to get a perfect run every time on every boss. You're not going to get a perfect boss RNG on every boss. There's too many. So run here. As soon as he's about to land, put this on. Lock on his head and start twist like tapping right. Usually that gives me the good RNG, but this is the bad one. So with this one, you want to just hit the, the head as much as you can. So as much as you can, you want to stagger this head. If you hit it four times, this is really bad RNG, this. If he flies away, terrible RNG. But if he does the fire breath, that's a different attack. So again, it's, it's just practicing and getting used to it. Normally I'd like probably just reset, but you want to stagger this head, it's like four hits. So hit him twice and then repost. You don't actually want to use uh, human pine resin for that fight just there. You want to use gold pine. I just used uh, human pine because you use it on this second phase and I forgot. It's not too bad. I'm going to show you the fight again anyway because I, I want to show you a fight with good RNG and what happens. How much quicker it is. Tank some hits because it's worth tanking a few hits because you get your endurance back and you don't have to roll. If you just constantly roll in fights, you're not ever going to get stamina back. So you want to stagger him out of that attack so he does the same attack twice. So that way you've got a load of free hits on him. There you go, he's dead. So this is what I mean. You, there's uh, The second phase free, pretty much. You, you hit him until he turns into a transformation where he does the slam. You want to stay to the right of him. And then when he does the slam, after that, go central, start hitting on him. If you cancel him out of it, he'll try and do it again. So you just get loads and loads of vel ones for free. So yeah, it's just a matter of... Uh, I keep saying you need to practice, but it, it's it's so annoying how much I have to stress it because it's so true. Just as about to land, put this gold pine resin on. Now that's bad RNG. I'm going to keep going until I get the good RNG. Just because it's really important to show what happens with the good RNG because you really need to see the difference between a good fight and a bad fight on this fight because a good fight with good RNG you save probably like 15-20 seconds depending on how bad your RNG is in the first phase if you don't get the good one. But it's really important to know where you can save time in a run. Alright, here we go. Put the gold pine. Give me the good one. Finally, please. No, nope. he doesn't like me today. This is... This is a British RNG in full force right now. If you've never heard of British RNG, this is what it is. It's where you get bad luck again and again and again. Nothing you can do. It's a shame really, but... Come in here. Gold Pine Resident. Finally. Nope, he doesn't want to give me the good RNG today, guys. Sadly. <laughs> I think I've bugged my save file. This is going to make the tutorial run like 10 minutes longer than it should do. But it's, I really need to show you what how this fight can go with the other RNG. Like I said, the the different options that you can, the different attacks that bosses can give you, can really change the fight. It can make it go on for so long, or it can make it just really short. This this boss is not going to be nice today. I think I've actually may have break it, broken it if um. I may have broken it with a save file, which is really weird. I've never had that. Or I really am just this unlucky. It's insane, actually. <laughs> Alright, is he going to do it now? Jesus, dude. That's insane. But yeah, th this attack is the most annoying, really. I let it play out. Because if he does this attack, hey, this is what you kind of want. You want him to like side swipe so you can hit the head. So there you go, you stagger it and he's dead. As soon as you stagger it, it's just one, two, repost. And he's dead in the first phase. So that's not too slow, but if he flies up in the air, it's really bad. I'm going to give it one more attempt. Hopefully I'll get the good RNG. If not, I'm just going to move on. But if you get the good RNG, roll to the right. This is just for people who have run the game, you'll know anyway, because you've practiced and you've watched this. 
run to the right, roll, hit the head three times, and then as soon as he launches back and goes to run forward, hit it the fourth time, and you'll stagger him. If not, then follow it and then hit it one more time. It's really simple. Here we go, this is a good RNG, finally. Alright, roll to the right. One, two, three. And then you want to hit it here. And he's dead. Okay, now see how different that is <clears throat> compared to bad RNG. That's completely ridiculous how much time you save if you get the good RNG there. You put the human pine resin on at the beginning of this second phase. I tank a hit here because I want my stamina. This boss can be really annoying sometimes, but it gives you a lot of times to heal up, so it's kind of cool. You can do a rolling L1, which is really important sometimes in some fights. Hopefully he does the same thing again. Yep. And this just gives you so many, so much time to... Okay, listen for the bone. Listen for the boom, and that's when I'm going to bone. See? Perfect. As soon as you hear that boom, go. You're safe to go, pretty much. Okay, straight to old Demon King. This is a really easy boss. Go straight to Demon Ruins. This boss is ridiculously easy. You, he's, I wouldn't even call him a boss, to be honest. He he can't do anything. He, actually, he just cannot do anything. <clears throat> okay, this is where you want to change from the... You want to put the gold pine bundles on instead of the human pine resin that you just used. So you want to have this ready for this fight. And these bundles you can put on while you're running. They're different to the resins. So let me show you this fight quickly. I'll make a safe file. Literally just in case. I think there's one attack he might be able to do to where he can hit you. But honestly, I've never had him attack. You can just stun lock him for the rest of the fight. You want to do five hits. Then you want to wait for your stamina. Three hits. Five, three. And then just wail on him. So get stamina. Put this on. One, two, three, four, five. Get wait for three stamina three hits. One, two, three. Then you get staggered. One, two. Five, three, two. And then as soon as he puts his knee down, bone. Okay, that's one of the bosses you do not wait you do not need to wait for the boom. I wait for him to put his knee down just to be safe. So wait for his knee to go down and then and then uh, bone. It's the same with this next boss. This boss, you don't have to wait for the boom. <clears throat> the bosses you don't need to wait for the boom sound is Old Demon King, Champion, uh, Old Demon King, Champion Gundir, um, Grave Tender, uh, and that's it, to be honest. I think maybe Medea, actually, Medea. In sec They're the only ones you bone on. So th these are the bosses you, you don't need to worry about the timing too much. Alright, for this boss, you want to put the parry shield instead of the staff on. And that's literally it. That's all you need to do for this boss. This boss is super simple when you've finished practice on him. <clears throat> if you if you get practice, if you practice on this guy, you'll never f fail this fight either. He's a 100% consistent boss, similar to old Demon King. I'm going to quit out here just to show you. Okay, my splits don't fully show what, what I do, but what I do is three hits... Parry, three hits, parry, <clears throat> and then run away, parry, tw two hits, and then two hits. So what you need to do is you want to be running here, and you want to have this shield out instead. When you get here, past this bush, put the thunder on, go to two-handed, and hit him three times. Uh, three times, wait for this attack, parry, one, two, three, run away straight away, roll, wait for this, one, Two after this, and wait for him to get up fully. One, two, dead. Every time that fight's the same. Wait for him to put his knee down. Go. Yeah, you don't have to wait for the boom. Just wait for his knee to go down. Bone back. That fight, hundred percent consistent. Follow exactly what I just did. Works every time. All right, now this is where you level up. The last time in the game, just before DLC fights. So we're near the end of the game now, guys. We're getting really close. Thank fuck. You know. You've gone through all this hard run, and now you finally want to finish. So you go 27, 29, 45. 
And that's your last level up. 27 Vigor, 29 Endurance, 45 Dexterity. Run to the left here so you can go straight on the fire link. On the uh, bone fire, sorry. Left once, straight to Snowfield. And there you go. Now you're going to the DLCs. Now this is where it starts to get a little bit annoying because there's a lot of RNG. And I'm telling these bosses have the most RNG out of any bosses in the game, I'd say. There's Frida. There's Grave Tender. Okay, here, this is... When you get here, take off your twin blades. Take off all your armor. Put your... No, actually, no. Yeah, take off everything. Keep your legs on. Roll here. Keep running. All right, so you want the staff on the right hand, and then you just want the legs on. Run in between these wolves. Sometimes they control you, but just quit out if they give you trouble. Or just keep rolling. Because they can follow you to where I am now. Just roll if they hit you. If they go to hit you, just like roll away. Or just quit out and load back in. It takes two seconds to quit out, so... It's a pretty safe strat to do. Uh, so this is where I'm coming up to a skip called the Scream Skip. <clears throat> For this skip, you're going to want to practice a lot again. Honestly, the longer I do this tutorial, the more I've realised how much time I've put into this fucking game. <laughs> but yeah, you want to come here, roll off the edge here. Go to the right side of this slope. If you hold right and sprint, sometimes you don't get the stagger animation when you come off here. And you can just sprint fully like I just did there. Alright, now this skip here, you want to come wide here. You want to come off this and come out a little bit wide. And you want to run. You see where I am now? This rock, when my left foot is on. This is what I use to time when I jump. This rock that I've got my left foot on right now. Alright, find that by running like here. You can see it. And this black hole, basically, above my head. If you, like, change the camera angle, it's like a black... It's like a shadow above where my head is. I aim for that, for that, just to the left of that. And I jump just before this rock. And that's literally my setup here. I'm going to quit out in case I die, because you can slide off the rock here. Right. When you practice this, you can do this quite often, other than not. You run, jump just before the rock, carry on sprinting by holding up and a little bit left, and then when you're running up the rock, jump late. You need to jump really late on the second jump. So come here, just before the rock, jump, and then jump again. See? Perfect. I'll do it a few more times. I could die, but I'm just that's how you do it. So you want to run here, jump just before this rock, See, if you do it a little bit late, like I just did there, that's what happens. But you're safe, so you can just try it again. So it's not too bad. And then jump again. You want to do that second jump late. But that's it's, when you do practice, that jump's pretty easy. So that's called the Scream Skip. It puts you up here. And what you want to do from here on is come onto this bonfire and light it. Now, this is another skip that takes you to Grave Tender. Right, I'm going to quit out here and show you from, from here. Now, I've, pra I've been practicing this skip, and there's a YOLO way that you can do this skip, and there's a safe way that you can do this skip. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you the YOLO way, if I can do it. What you need to do is cast Spook here, jump down, run, make sure your angle is... Pointed towards these rocks and run straight into them so you don't fall off. Okay. Now you want your center of your screen perfectly where I am. I use the center of my screen. You can use your health bar, right? Where my health bar is now is perfect. This guy can throw you off the edge if he comes, but he hasn't come in, so that's fine. But you want to run into this corner, right? You can slide off this rock really easily, so you need to be careful. What I do is I put the center of my screen in between. The, these two like jugged out rocks if you know what I mean just below all the way down there's two little rocks that are pushed out further than the rest on the on the like the icy wall ahead of me like straight away ahead of me literally where the center of my head is right now is perfect to where I'm talking about just above my hair is where my center of my aim is aiming for this isn't that precise so you don't need to be too careful on it okay cast spook if you run just straight here, this is the non yellow version. So run straight here, run in the corner, cast Spook, and then jump at the last possible moment. And then quit out as soon as you land. And you'll be down there. Uh, that worked, but 
So I'm going to show you the other version. But yeah, that always works 100% of the time. You just need to walk into that corner, cast spook, find your spot, jump off. You can do this the YOLO way, which is now. I'd, I haven't got this perfect yet, but I'm going to show this now because I might end up doing this in the future if I can get it down more. So what you need to do is you need to run against this rock, same way, and then just jump like that. See, if, if you don't do it perfectly, which I, I just didn't do, you die. So I'm just giving you a taster of what I might be doing in the future. But there is a way of doing that, I think, more consistently. If I jump a little bit more further left, the YOLO version will pretty much always work. But I'm not going to do that too, yet, uh, too much yet because I haven't fully practiced that. But I've practiced this other version, which is always safe. And it's not much slower. It's not like that yellow version is going to save much time. It would save like three or four seconds. But, well, maybe not even that. But yeah, like again, the safe way here. Just come off here. Make sure your camera is pointed toward these rocks or you will slide off. And make sure you're running into the rocks or you'll slide off as well. See, just like that. See what I just did? Make sure you don't want... Make sure you do not run dead straight into the rocks. Because what you'll do is you'll just position your character to be straight. And your character will want to just fall off, okay? That's not what you want to do. I'll show you what you want to do. You want to aim your camera exactly how I did. But you don't want to run straight. You want to run top left. So make sure your analog is pointed towards the top left. But your camera angle is the exact same position. Otherwise you'll just slide off like I just did there. So come here, fall off, stay super close to these rocks, run diagonal, cast spook, put your camera where I was talking about, jump off, quit out as soon as you land, and done. You're down at Grave Tender. Just showing you all the different possibilities that you can do, and what can kill you and what can't, and what I might be doing in the future. Just being in it, trying to be as helpful as I can to people that will run this game. You're going to take full damage here. You want to put on your armor. Set for the glo uh, now you can keep the gloves. Change the staff to the cell swords and heal to full. Perfect. Keep your bundles ready and go two-handed. Regen stamina here. Run to these two dogs. Use the bundle and one-shot them. Roll because this guy will try and attack you and then just hit him. Sometimes he'll troll like this, but just kill him. Put the gold pine resin on, and then fight this guy. This guy, super fucking annoying. See that hitbox? You just want to you want to try and just spam L1 on this guy, if I'm being honest with you. This guy is super annoying to fight. He'll hold his shield up sometimes, sometimes he won't. You want to try and capitalize. When he goes down to half HP, he'll give you a super free attack. So here we go. Now you can just hit him as much as you can. The wolf has spawned in now, and this guy is being really annoying. You need to kill him as quick as possible before the wolf comes. See, this is just me being trolled. That's just a troll. You want to heal up, and then go straight to this wolf. Fight this wolf. Tank that hit, because you can get two free hits off. <clears throat> hit him as much as possible. You've got to learn how to dodge this boss, because he can go super YOLO. As soon as he goes down to half HP, he starts doing this, so he's dead, basically. Yeah, he gets staggered just before the last hit. But yeah, I'll show you that boss one more time. Without, hopefully, without the guy trolling me, the Grave Tender. But he can be super annoying. You just lose time. You won't die. You just you can heal up. You can run away from him if he's really annoying. But when you're going for world record times, you're going to want to be super aggressive and hope he doesn't hold up his shield. So yeah, come here again. Fall down. Change this staff to your swords, put your armor on, and then put your bundles on. Make sure you're healed up to full though, otherwise you won't one-shot the dogs with uh, Lloyd's sword ring. So come here, sometimes the dog aggro's early here, see this? If he does that, just wait, and just try and attack them when they get here. Right, heal up, gold pine resin. See, this is really annoying. It, if he just does his shield up, there's literally nothing you can do. <clears throat> you just have to hope he just doesn't hit the block all the time. 
Okay, you can use the weapon art like I just did there. If you use the weapon art, sometimes you'll catch them in the middle of a roll. Now, this is what you want to do. You want to have this guy here. Hopefully, he charges me. Okay, that's bad. If he does the jump over, that's bad. Because he can just do this and just be super annoying. Because he'll go straight into a charge here. Tank this attack. Just tank that attack so you can get hits off. There you go. And now he's dead. Perfect. As soon as he puts his leg down, bone to last bonfire. <coughs> straight to bonfire last, rested at. And then you'll go straight back up top where you lit the bonfire before you did the glitch. So now you can go straight to Wilhelm and continue through the DLC. So you've just killed that boss, straight to Wilhelm now. See now this guy is really bloody annoying. He's very similar to Half-Light and he's very similar to Grave Tender in which he's an NPC that rolls a lot. See this rock? You want to run up it. Come up here. As soon as this starts to like go up, we'll just sprint up, okay? So come here, sprint up. See this guy coming, creeping over? You need to do it before he comes or you're going to get fucked up by him. Jump up here. From there. And then come in here. And up the ladder. And that's that little skip done. Okay, now straight to Wilhelm. What you need here is you need the staff on here. So turn to your assassin gloves. So you can have the staff on. And get ready with a Estus to heal. You want to jump off here, heal up, and get ready with your bundles. And what you want to do is, when you've got full stamina, just at this entrance, change the staff, go two-handed, and equip your bundle just before you get to him, and L1. You want to catch him here. The reason you have the staff at is because he can do an attack where he just lets you hit him for free. So you want to try and catch him here after he's done attacks. Sometimes it can be super annoying, like this. Try not to get caught by that. Okay, this this one, you want to just backstab him. He heals. If he heals like that, that's really, really, really bad. So, like, this is just super, really, like, really bad RNG right now. But you want to try and catch him as much as you can out of rolls. <clears throat> and if you don't, this is the attack you want to backstab, or he just heals up to full. So, make sure you get behind this guy. And if he... If he starts trolling more and more, just you literally just need to just fight him normally. It it can be really bad. Like this is what can happen as well. You can just wail on him and he just does nothing. Uh, weapon art is really good against this guy as well. You can L1 into like a weapon art like this, and it usually catches him. But yeah, if he starts doing this, you just you you're kind of fucked to be honest because it's really annoying. So look how much he rolls. If I just spam R1. But yeah, as soon as you kill him, you just need to practice this again. This is just RNG. Wait for him to die. Pull this as soon as you get the item. And then quit out. I'm not going to redo that boss again. That fight again and again. There's, I just showed you what can happen. He can do a heal. And you have to backstab him out of it before he heals. <clears throat> and he just rolls a lot. So you need to try and catch him on rolls. Quite a lot. Alright, so he's dead. Got the key. Put it up here. Take off your Soul Sword Twin Blades. And just have your legs on. Because <clears throat> you're going to be rolling through this area quite a lot. Run up here. Run to the right of these guys. You rarely have to roll here. Run up this little slope. And then run up this little slope. Regen stamina. Keep running. Sorry my voice is going a little bit. I'm not very well at the moment. <clears throat> run up here. See now, when these guys are about to lunge, roll. Stay to the left here so this guy can't bite you. <clears throat> Keep running. Go to the right of this guy. Stay to the right. Now, the guy's going to shoot you with a bow, and this guy's going to try and hit you. So stay to the left, juke right, and then roll. It delays the arrow enough time so you can roll both of the attacks perfectly. The wolves can be really annoying here as well, so quit if they chase you too much. But I think I can just run away from them. <clears throat> you don't always have to quit. And make sure you're ready with the Homeward Bone. That's what I want ready in my inventory. Run straight towards where Frida is. Grab this door and quit out.
Alright, as soon as you load back in, grab the bonfire. Actually, I think I might have the... Ah, no, this is a... Oh, no, I thought it was a really rare glitch there. A really rare glitch you can get is where the uh, loading screen just loads forever, and you have to just restart the game. So light this bonfire, and run straight back down where you came from, because you need to pull a lever, and then bone back to the last bonfire. So we're getting very close to the end of the game now, guys. Thank God. Just go to the left of this, drop down, roll, grab this. Skip the cutscene, and then bone to last bonfire rested. Run to this side of the switch, run just inside, and you rarely ever get hit there. If you get hit, you can just roll again, try and roll, try and bone back. But if you die, it's not the worst thing in the world, because you actually end back at the bonfire you want to be at. You lose time, but it's not too bad. Okay, run through here, let the dialogue go. And now equip all your stuff. You can unequip the staff. And now this fire is really bloody annoying, but you'll get used to it. I'm going to quit out and just make a save file. I should have should have made it earlier, just up there, but it's fine. <clears throat> okay, you're going to come to this fight, and as soon as you start the fight, put the gold pine resin on and throw a knife at her so she comes towards you. So come in here, gold pine resin, throw a knife. She comes towards you, and then you can just try and attack her there. She's really fast with her attack, so you need to learn this fight. This fight's really annoying to you uh, actually do. And it's just a lot of practice again, like I said, because there's so many different attacks that she can do. And now you need to learn how to punish. I'm actually getting really bad RNG here. Okay, she got destroyed there. So heal up, and then use the throwing knife. Just as you spawn in here, so she jumps over you, or runs towards you. Don't put gold pine resin on here, you don't need it. The fight should not, first phase should not last long enough. Sometimes he does this, which is really good RNG. But if he doesn't, he, he drives into the corner. I'll, sh I'll tell you in a minute. So you want to just hit him here, go around the back of him. And he's dead. Okay. Now, what's really good about our... That's really good RNG, but what happens is he usually crawls towards you. So let him do two crawls and then go into this corner and hit him in the back, similar to what I just did. And now find where Frida is. Put your green blossom on. And use another gold pine resin. Okay. As soon as she does this in the air, get behind her. Like, get underneath her. Do an L1. And then backstab. Charged R2, two L1s, and then get ready for her attack. What this boss is, is just a matter of learning exactly what the boss can do and how you should react to it. Does this he's dead for free that's what you want to do if he does that attack get behind him and then backstab heal up while you're waiting for the bonfire to come and boom Reed is dead perfect pretty nice fight just uh practice that boss up try and learn when you can strafe backwards and when you can go forward on the aggressive what attacks you can attack and just just mess around with it same with all the other boss fights You'll learn the boss is quicker than you think. All right now here you want to take off all your armor. So you're below 30%. Keep your legs on. I like to have the uh, staff on my right side here. Just in case I need it. Because I might fail the angel skip. And that's something I'll be doing in runs. If I, if I fail the angel skip you might want to go the other way. Now, I'll show you the other way for Angel Skip, because that's a skip that's pretty technical and annoying to do. And it saves 40 seconds, so I wouldn't learn it just yet if you were practicing this game. Depends really, depends really if you want to dive in head first. 
But yeah, just follow what I'm doing here. Just go the exact same route, pathing. It's the fastest way you can get to places. Come over here. Run up this side. Up here, jump off. Roll. Just to the right of this house here. <clears throat> as soon as you come on this side, as soon as you land, quit out. Quit out as soon as you land from there. Okay, I'm going to reset my game because these are the two places I reset my game. Just before Aldrich and just before Angel Skip. And when I reset my game at these two places, I never crash. So it's, I've always used it. I think you should just reset your game at these two places every time. So just before Aldrich... Like just before the Aldrich Elevator, when you pull the lever, and just before Demon Princes, uh, no, just before Angel Skip. Now for this skip, I'm going to show you the long way and the short way. Alright, so this is the short way. You want to go to the left of here, jump off, jump up here, let go. See, sometimes you slide down like that, okay? I'm telling you now, that is RNG and there's nothing you can do. You want to run to the left of this thing here, jump off, and get out. <clears throat> sometimes you can't, you just really can't do this skip. It's, it's kind of annoying to do. Sometimes you, you can quit out and retry it, or you can wait for him to start shooting and then go again. So it redoes his shooting. Stay to the left, jump off at the last possible moment, jump up here, let go, and then jump again. Okay, there you go. That's how you do it. That worked. Let me show you again. I'll wait for him to stop shooting. So, when you come up here, you want to stay to the farthest left, jump off at the last possible moment, jump up here, let go, jump up again. So when I say let go, I mean let go of your left analog, so your character doesn't roll after the second jump. Because you're doing three jumps, okay? So <coughs> you jump onto the jump onto the crate, uh, the like jump onto the uh, don't know, the cage. Then run right, jump, let go, and then start running again after you finish the let go and jump up. But yeah, it's, it's really important. You want to stay on the left side here, furthest left, last possible moment. Jump off, jump, and then jump again. Sometimes you can't get the third jump. But yeah, I'll show you the other way you can go if you can't get this skip. Okay, this is the other way that you go if you can't get the skip, okay? I showed you how to get it twice, and I showed you what happens if you fail it a few times. And this is what happens if you want to go the long way, but safe safe way. You don't have to do the skip. So put Spook on. Go to the left of this house and just jump off. <coughs> go across this branch. Say hi to this guy. Go up this branch. See, you can see how much longer this way is if you don't get the skip. Because if you do the skip, you end up up here. Like basically where I am right now. That's where you end up if you do the skip. So jump off here. And if you haven't got enough Estus left from Frida... Grab this bonfire and get the Estus. <clears throat> but if you have like five, six Estus or four or five Estus, then carry on and just fight the boss. Alright, so put all your armor back on. Get all everything ready. Make sure you've got this staff on because you want it for after. Right, I'm going to make a save file just in case. And I'm going to show you how to fight this boss now. This boss is pretty consistent in the way that you do him, but... It isn't consistent on the attacks he gives. So for the first phase, you always want to run to the exact same place and you always want to put on gold pine resin in the same place. And the second phase, you want to do the same starting. But we'll see anyway, I'll show you. So come off here. Roll left. Go towards this left demon, not the right one. And stop here. Perfectly here. He'll jump over you. One, two. Move out the way of this. Walk towards him. And just try and... Get L1s off and strafe his attacks. You'll learn exactly what you can like strafe and what exactly hits you. See, so, like, if I go to the right of that, it won't hit me. Alright, he's dead. 
Now right, you want to fight this guy? See, like some of these attacks aren't hitting me when they're like near me. Just because you like this one, you have to roll because it's got a ridiculous hitbox. That one will hit you as well, and so will that one. So you need to roll them. Right, that's the first phase done. Okay, heal up to full. You always want to be at full HP as optimal as you can, but healing up in a fight is usually slow unless it's in between phases. All right, so here, right, you want to use your Blossom and you want to use Bleed. Use your Carthus Rouge. You need Bleed on this second phase. Wait for the explosion. Run in to the right side and hit him four times. And you want to, what you want to do is usually swivel round with him. See, I didn't get the swivel round because I positioned incorrectly, but mainly that's what you want to do. You want to swivel... Or you end up having like a fight like this, which is just terrible. So you want to repost him here. If you can repost him, it's really nice. Because what you'll do is you'll attack, you'll proc the bleed as he tries to summon this second phase. So there you go, killed him before he flew off. So that's, a re that's actually not a bad second phase. The, the only bad thing about that fight is what you want to do in the start of the second phase is you want the character to, you want the princess to twist around with you. So when he's turning around, you want to be attacking towards the left. So the character starts swiveling around and you can get loads of hits off for free. That's the only bad thing that happened in that fight. The second phase was pretty nice actually other than that because if you can cancel him flying away the second time, you save a lot of time. So that's just saying that needs practicing you'll get used to. Again, from fighting the boss through save files. Alright, now here comes the technical skips. The last two skips of the game. The last two skips. So you'll be fucking happy. Because there's a lot of skips in this game. But yeah, you want to be ready with the bundles here, okay? <clears throat> Run down these steps. You're going to be quitting three times here. I'm pretty late there, actually, because I was regening my stamina. I might have to quit four times, but you want to quit as soon as they're about to shoot. Don't regen your stamina at the top of the stairs like I did, because the guy has time to spawn in the uh, guys with the bows. But you can quit four times. It's not too big of a deal. It doesn't really matter how many times you quit. If you quit four times, it's two seconds last, so over three quits. So. Alright, quit here. Oh, quite a little bit late there, so I took a bit of health loss. So what you want to do here is you want to use the bundle as you're about to go up to the Judicator. So you would have full health here, <clears throat> but you want to use the bundle here and then you want to hit him. Usually it's five hits, but I didn't have full health. And then quit out as soon as you kill him. Because you need to quit out here because he summons like a uh, sort of skeleton. And the skeleton disrupts his skip. Uh, the skip's really precise. So if you got something like really bugging you, you won't be able to do it. So I'll show you how to do this skip. This skip's really precise. Uh, it's not really precise, but it's precise enough that you'll be practicing it a long time. <clears throat> what you need to do here. This bug. Hit him three times. And every time you do this with your shield, every time you parry with this shield, he he aggroes to you and runs over to you. And you want to do that a few times to make him chase you. So use your weapon art on this guy, LTRT, run around this corner, parry, wait for him to come. Keep parrying so he keeps sprinting at you. Change to your staff in your right hand. Stand opposite this soul here, in this position, and you want him as soon. You want to roll at the last possible moment that he's going to attack you. 
So roll here, sprint, stop your sprint with a parry, and then put your foot in the exact same position that I'm putting my foot in right now. And this takes practice. That's all it does. And you want to quit out as soon as you land. So as soon as you see, as soon as you land and as soon as you see the lights spawn in, that's when you quit out. And you do a perfect partake skip. Okay? <clears throat> now if you do that exactly the same way as me, that will not fail. You need to watch the video, slow it down, do exactly the same things. It might be something as small as Okay, you might say, oh, it's not working for me, okay? What you're probably not doing is you're not stopping your sprint with a parry. So when you're sprinting, you need to parry, and that stops your sprint. If you sprint to the location, stop, and then parry, it completely changes what the bug does. You need to stop your sprint with a parry. So there's so many little things that I just did that you need to watch carefully and make sure that you do. So when he's about to attack you, roll at the last possible moment, and then run over to the spot that I went to, Parry, then walk forward and put your foot in the correct spot. And that'll work every time. So re pick up this bonfire, rest, come back down the elevator. Alright, cast Spook as soon as you land on the elevator. Come on the left side. And what you want to do here is just walk off the left. And you'll land down. Roll into the statue and pick up this ring. You might not want the ring, but it's a really good ring. It gives you a lot of stamina, so you don't have to ever worry about it. Get everything uh, equipped again. See, I'm over 70%, so you don't want that. You want Spook here on the staff on the right hand. Come to this part of the bridge, all right? This is the part where you want to come off at, because what you do is you're running here. This is how I know where I'm jumping off. Come off here. And this part's jagged. Like there's a jagged rock right here. This is the perfect place to jump off. You can tell it's, it's further out left than any part of these rocks. So you want to cast Spook. And then just jump off here perfectly. Quit out as soon as you land. And then go to the second part of the skip. Now this part is pretty simple it's, it's easier than the first partake skip so if you've done the first one congratulations now it's time for the second one which is easier so you won't have any trouble with this one put put your cell sword twin blades on make sure you're all ready i i like to take this off because don't need it run to the left over here okay you want to run to the left side here roll when you land parry and then put your foot your right foot in this hole. Exactly where I just put it. Okay, that didn't work, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you perfectly why that didn't work. What happened is your character, when you, when you land, you need to roll further towards the bug than what I did, otherwise he, aggro, he doesn't aggro perfectly, and he tries to grab you instantly, okay? So, I'll show you what I did wrong, and I'll show you what you need to do. When you roll, when you land to this left side, you want to roll further to the bug, and you want to parry as soon as you get in the spot. Okay? So let me show you. You can't wait to parry like I did. So come here, roll, parry instantly. Parry that attack, heal up if you like, if you're scared. And make sure your foot is in that hole, or you it will not work. And you'll be sent straight through like this. So now I'll compare that, I showed you the wrong way and the right way. The reason why I did that is because this skip is can only fail in two ways. In one way, and sorry, and that is that way. So if you do not parry instantly and get in your spot, it won't work. You need to land, roll, parry instantly. So don't land, roll, wait, parry. You need to get in the put your foot in that hole that I put my foot in. So like I said, slow down the video, look where I put my foot, and then learn how to do it. It's just a matter of practice. So in this point, what I just used is a Divine Blessing. So open up your inventory, use the Divine Blessing that you got from killing the Judicator, and it'll give you full HP, so you don't need to heal, like, five times. Okay, perfect. Now it's time for Medea, guys. I'm going to quit out here and make a save file for you guys. Now you're thinking, where the fuck are you right now, Nems? Where the fuck are you? I'll tell you where I am. I'm right above Medea. Now you... This, if you haven't seen this skip before, it's kind of nutty. But, uh, yeah. I'm talking really fast and stuff, but it's because I'm really hot. My room is absolutely boiling hot right now. 
You want to walk off exactly where I just walked off. And you want to get your bundles ready. This is where your bundles come into play. Alright, regen stamina just before this part here. Sprint. Put one bundle on. Hit the head once. Walk forward. And then just hit the head. Okay, now walk to the left. Wait to him go past. And then walk forward with him. Okay, now you want to use your bundles whenever you're running to his head. Okay, roll this one, and then roll the second one. He's going to do a breath, fire, bundle, roll. Go through it. And just try and hit the head. That's all you need to hit. Because you need to stagger him. Okay, wait for him to breathe the fire. Walk into the fire, because this doesn't hurt you, that one. If you do it late enough. Tank a hit there, because I could get an extra hit off. And okay, now he should transform after a few hits here. Okay, yeah, you start transforming. Now get as many hits as you can here. Walk away. Walk back in. Don't go too early. Okay, perfect. That fight's really good. You want to try and stagger him. And you want to hit him enough time so his health goes down to the R in his name. Dead. Use Dark Sign. Bonfire last rested. As soon as he lands. Done. That's how you fight Madeira. Aim for the head. Use bundles while you're running to him. Make sure you have one bundle left for the next fight. Don't use all your bundles. If you run out of bundles, if you run out and only have one left, just leave it. It's not worth to use again. Okay, run here. Pull this lever. And then quit out. With Madeira, it's just learning the moveset. Stand in front of him and reacting properly. And just always trying to hit his head as much as possible. Learn when he transforms. And try and get as much endurance as you can before that. So you can hit his head. So it doesn't give him a lot of room to do anything in the second phase. You want to try and put your staff on here, cast it, and then roll off. If you, if you do it too late, like I just did there, you'll just flat roll. So you want to do that quick. See this item here, just before half light? Pick this up. Run just to the left of this guy. He'll never hit you. Put the blossoms on, the, green, the budding green blossoms. Skip this dialogue. Open the door, quit out. Now it's time to fight the most annoying boss for any Souls Runner ever. Every Souls Runner of this game will tell you this is the worst boss out of any boss in this game. And it's purely RNG. <clears throat> and I'm going to tell you how to minimalize this RNG as much as possible, okay? When he spawns, half light, you want to stay far away so he instantly does the ultra poise, ultra like poise attack. Then he pulls out his bow, runs to the side of him. Hit him twice, once, twice. He'll roll, follow him, just walk up to him. Once, twice. He'll roll again. He might bring out his shield. Just You don't want to hit more than twice. Never hit more than twice on this boss unless it's desperate or you've got him like trapped in a corner maybe if you're super lucky. Do you know what I mean? Like, and there's another thing that you can do that will mainly catch him is if you do L1 into a weapon art. Now this works, but it's slower. It depends. It's all situational, but this boss is <clears throat> really cancer. It really is. And you can lose so much time on this boss for no reason. So use the bundle on this guy. Get to the behind him, or he'll hit you. One, two, three, four. Wait for four hits, and then get three. One, two, three. Dead. Okay. Now wait for this girl to spawn. As soon as she spawns in, gold pine resin. Wait for her hair to drop. And then try and backstab. I, I mistimed it there, but... Yeah, so this, this character is really annoying sometimes, but sometimes he's not. So just got wrecked. Okay, now this is where I like standing for half light. Spawns in. As soon as it starts spawning in, eat your blossom. He'll do the ultra poise. Here we go. Pulls out the bow. And if he pulls out the bow and walks in the gold... Yeah, now this is perfect, pretty much. Okay, that was bad. He pulled out his bow, then he pulled out his shield. The shield is the worst attack. Nice, he's kind of unlucky. If this guy tries to heal him, then you should try and hit him. That was a really good fight. That's a really good fight. So, if... 
if that character, the Painting Guardian, tries to heal him, try and hit the Painting Guardian out of the heal. Try and heal on this elevator, by the way, as well, because you'll save time. But that fight was pretty nice. Pretty, that was a really nice fight. You, you need to just, like, try and just do L1, L1. And I had him in a corner a little bit, so I started spamming, and I tried to charge my R2 as well. And then you want to quit out on this door as soon as you get here. So that's when I split. Really nice fight. You just need to get used to it. Again, it's a really cancerous fight, but it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of practice. And then here's the last boss, guys. Here's a little tip for you. As soon as you come in here, if you have no Estus from the half light fight, you're going to want to grab this bonfire usually, right? Don't do that. You've got one bone left, okay? So what you'll do, bone to last bonfire rested. You're thinking that's going to take you far back, but it won't. What it does is it lights the bonfire in this room and it gives you all your Estus back. So the bonfire is lit here and all your Estus is back. And all your, so is your, all your health. So if you ever need to do that, if you've got enough Estus, you can just go straight to the boss. But other than that, just go straight here and fight. So here's the end. All you need now is your gold pine resin and your bossoms, and now you're just going to fight Gao. And this boss has a lot of RNG, again, like all the others, and it's a matter of practice. So I'll show you how I fight him and how I adapt to certain attacks, but there's going to be, again, you just have to practice a safe file and learn how to fight him. So put a blossom on before the fight. As soon as the fight starts, use a gold pine resin. You can get one attack off here, usually. If it misses, it's fine. But you're always safe. So three... Four, five, five hits to stagger. So always remember that. If he does this attack, run back. And then when he comes forward, run forward underneath him. So you get all stamina. And you can just dodge all the attack. You don't have to roll it. This is bad RNG, but it's fine. Especially if he follows up at the end here. Right, he's dead. It's a really nice fight. Really nice first phase. Put a blossom on. Heal up if you need to, and put one more gold pine resin on, and then fight him. You've got to remember in this phase, it's really important that you remember that he staggers at five hits. So you can cancel him out. Look, I cancelled his attack there because I knew it was five hits. You can cancel him out of that bow attack if you hit him, but it's kind of sketchy. <coughs> hey, roll to the right of this attack. And then heal up, walk away, he'll buff after you stagger him twice. One, two, three, roll to the left of that attack, roll back, run back for that one. And usually he does a follow up, which is really nice to, uh, to like, abuse. He'll always follow this up with, like, a dance slam. Walk to the right here, and it'll just strafe it every time. Okay, left of this one, walk back. And then walk forward and he usually follows up. Yeah, perfect. If he does that attack, you can always do that. It's a really scary attack. Walk back and then again to the right. So you always get like a safety. And then to finish the run, you quit out as soon as you see... As soon as that pops up, as soon as you see the yellow right in, done. Run's over. <clears throat> Alright. And then as soon as you finish the run, make sure you look at the in-game time at the end to make sure it matches up to your live split. And that way you perfectly know what your time is and the uh, editors can verify your run. So there you go. That is perfect, basically. That's a 1.53 in-game time and I was showing you how to run the game. So if I can get sub two hours while standing around, showing you how to fight bosses, messing around, dying, you can get uh, sub two hours. So watch this tutorial. Practice yourself, join the community, there's a Discord you can join, speedsouls.com, go on the website, there's a Discord you can join. You can join my Discord that's at the bottom of my Twitch profile, it's in the description of YouTube. Um, yeah, there's a lot of ways you can contact me, I'm always available pretty much, if I'm not busy. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'll always help anyone who wants to run this game, and there's a lot of other people that will help you as well. So, thanks for watching if you've watched this all the way through. If you've got any... If you've got any uh, Things you need help with, give me a bell on Discord. Talk to other people that run this game. Watch streams of other people that watch this game. Just try and learn as much as you can if you want to run. Alright. 
I'm going to be making a tutorial of any percent and any percent no teardrop in the next coming days as well. So check them out. And uh, thanks for watching. It's a long, long tutorial, but worth it. Thanks, guys.